We are here with Anna Davis Court. I'm here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I know we've got a lot of friends on the chat. Oh yeah, I mean I'm one of the chat people, so like <laughs> you're I just came chatting with yourself the chat onto the camera. <laughs> yes, no, I love Adobe Live, so cool. I've been there before. <laughs> um, so do you want to share what you're going to be working on today? Absolutely, I am going to be working on Harry Potter. I mean, you guys know I absolutely love Harry Potter. Uh, I am wearing my Marauders Map dress. I've got my Hufflepuff pin, and of course it's gold for Hufflepuff. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to be explaining a lot of things to Brooke because she doesn't know quite all of the Harry Potter Apparently stuff. Apparently I'm a muggle. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to change that today. So uh, we're going to talk a lot of Harry Potter things. I want to know all your houses. I want to know uh, your favorite magical creatures, all your Harry Potter lore. Throw out some questions or some quotes. I would love Ooh. that. And today, OK, I did like a million sketches to figure out what I wanted to draw for today, because Harry Potter is a very big universe I can pick from. Uh, but today we're going to be doing mandrakes from around the world. Ooh. So also putting some like plant knowledge with it. So it's going to be a ton of fun. Can't yeah, wait. this is going to be awesome. So hey, everyone. Hey, Voodoo Val, Pokey Han. Got a Voodoo lot of people Val. who love Harry Potter on here. Um, and yes, Kathleen, I'm wearing the invisibility cloak. <laughs> you should have worn green today, so it could truly be. We need an invisibility cloak in here. Seriously. Yeah. That'd be so cool. That would be pretty awesome. <laughs> should have made that. <laughs> I'll wear green tomorrow, don't worry. Oh, I'm so into it. <laughs> it just like disappeared. We've got some Slytherins. So yeah, uh, I want to hear in the chat who, well, okay, so I was informed by Anna that there are different houses. So we need to know what house you're part of. There are Hogwarts houses, and then there's also the American School, which is a, a whole thing that JK made up on Pottermore, which is the website where she puts extra ideas, because there just wasn't enough in the books. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so the American School has four houses as well. So in that, okay. I'm a Pakwaji. <laughs> And in Hogwarts houses, I am a Hufflepuff. So I think maybe we should do the test for you today and see which okay. one you are. I'm into it. <laughs> we could get on Pottermore and find out her Patronus as well. <laughs> Your Patronus is basically like uh, what creature you would, you know, if you yes. did expect a Patronum, which is basically putting your spirit out to like think happy thoughts and take mm -hmm. away Dementors. Um, it takes the form of an animal that's like significant to you, basically, Ooh. or creature. Nice. And I got a dolphin, so I like the, imagining that like swimming through a forest would be I pretty could, cool. I can see that. <laughs> All right, we got Slitherpuff. I don't know. Slitherpuff, where you're like half of some of the attributes. We got some Ravenclaw, Gryffindor, uh, Pukwudgie. Pukwudgie. Yeah, that's from the uh, American house, Ilvermorny, or school, I should say. I have cool. to be very particular because everybody here, I'm sure, knows what we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> hey, by the way, raise your hands if you haven't read, seen anything of Harry Potter. I want to know those unicorns out there. <laughs> <laughs> So that's really fun to me because you get to experience it for the first time should you choose to read. I mean, in my opinion, read first and then yeah. watch the movies. I feel like I've uh, been invited into a secret club just by being on this, <laughs> being on this uh, live. Um, okay, so tell us a little bit about Mandrakes. Mandrakes, mandrakel room. Uh, they are basically like root babies. So they're plants on the top and you pull them out of the ground and they look like babies underneath. And they're used in the second Harry Potter book slash movie to uh, cure somebody out of being petrified. So there's a okay. thing that, I won't spoil anything. There's okay. something that petrifies you, which means you go completely yeah. stiff and like don't move, yeah. basically don't like breathe. Like petrified don't forests. Yeah, like, you're yeah. just a tree, you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so so the mandrake's cry is supposed to wake them up, uh, but if you hear it as a awake person, uh -huh. not petrified, it can kill you. So it's also Yikes. dangerous. Sounds scary. I'm sure it has other magical properties as well, um, but for the fun of it, I thought, I mean, they're kind of like these grumpy characters in the movie mm -hmm. or books or whatever. It's um, kind of like a, they're, I don't know, not so happy and they're crying. But I thought maybe there's a book out there that could tell people how to care for their mandrakes to make Ooh, them happy. Where it's like, I really like that. Yeah, like making them a, like a little happy bean. Yeah. And maybe they, I don't know, I've seen some uh, plants that grow with kind of a glass front so you can see roots that are happening. Like okay. say um, they want to get a time lapse of a carrot growing or something. So you can see oh, it grow against the glass underneath that's, the ground. That's super cool. <laughs> it is super cool. Speaking of which, I just harvested my first round of carrots this year and I was very 
very happy to see that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was a pretty sad, like, you know, balcony harvest. I don't have a yard, so <laughs> it wasn't huge, but That's I That's awesome. That's the most proud. satisfying thing in the world. It really is. It's just like, it, it is a little root babies. You pick yeah. them out and you're oh, just yeah, like, totally. oh my gosh. Um, I also got some potatoes, which was a total fluke because um, James and I, that's my husband James, mm -hmm. uh, we decided to cut a uh, potato in half, see if it could like grow some eyes or roots, oh, you know? Fun, yeah. And just throw it in the ground. So, like no care, no nothing. Uh -huh. Just like let the rain take care of it. And we grew two big potatoes out of it. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I mean, that's two awesome. is pretty sad. But it's more than I expected. I was just like, meh, we'll see what happens. Oh, James, in the chat. Yeah. I was, gonna, I was like, huh, that name looks familiar. How that? Yeah. Very Everybody cool. say hi to James. <laughs> All right. What are people saying in the chat? I um, people are saying well. a lot of stuff. Um, <gasps> Shana so we Parmesan, do... hi. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so oh we God. have a question, which brush did you use to sketch your mandrake? That's a great question because I've been loving this brush. Ever since I saw uh, Kyle on Adobe Live, he pulled out this Tilterific brush of his, Ooh, yeah. which all of Kyle's brushes are available if you have Adobe CC. So you can mm -hmm. just download them. And uh, Tilterific, I believe, is in the drawing pack or whatever he has. Mm -hmm. Um, and if you see, there's like a little thing in the upper corner that shows you the tilt of your stylus yeah, on the screen. So really if it's nice. like upright to the screen, it's mm -hmm. a very thin line. And then if it, you tilt it down, you can get that like wider very kind of graphite cool. look. That's really Sorry, nice. I have a huge file here. So yeah, I really so like cool. that you have the sort of the preview of like what you're gonna get. Absolutely, yeah. And it's a really natural brush to use. It feels like having a pencil. Yeah. Yeah, it looks really nice. Yeah. Uh, so Shauna is uh, preemptively apologizing to everyone on the chat because she <laughs> loves Harry Potter. <laughs> no apologies be needed. How dare? <laughs> no, uh, Shauna, we have been messaging. She knows what, what's yeah. going on. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, by the way, Shauna Parmesan makes some amazing brushes for Procreate as well. So there is like a ton oh, of nice. awesome people in the chat. James mm -hmm. is a character designer. We might have some other artists here that I know too. I just want to shout them all out because they're amazing. Um, but yeah, I'm super happy to see you guys in the chat. Oh, and Kendall too. Oh man, I just I you see know everyone. Oh, I'm sure I would see more if I had my glasses on. <laughs> cool. So Kendall just did a round of Harry Potter book covers oh my on gosh. Instagram. I love that. That's awesome. I did a Harry Potter book cover last year, and it was probably one of the hardest things I've ever done. Really? <laughs> There's so much in the books, yeah. and to like capture the essence of it in one image is really challenging. I don't think I captured everything, but it's one of those things where you're like, if I got a satisfying image that is different from what else has been created in the universe, because they're, mm -hmm. have you ever seen the covers of the books? Like, I, yeah. There are some from like every country, basically. There are so many iterations yeah. of the covers, yeah, yeah, yeah. and they're all breathtakingly beautiful. Yeah. So it's really hard to live up to that and be like, oh yeah. Totally. Oh, by the way, I was talking about this before stream. This guy is supposed to be from Hawaii, which I just came back from a while ago. I went on a trip nice. and found this tea plant. Oh man, that's beautiful. Right? And these uh, images I got are a reference from Adobe Stock, so mm -hmm. uh, you can access that through your libraries. It's pretty awesome. And these are uh, pink, like very bright, <laughs> I don't They're know gorgeous. what you call them, like magenta leaves, juicy with color. Mm -hmm. uh, so I wanted to bring some like flair into the leaves so that it's Ooh, not like just it. yeah. generic plant on mm -hmm. top. These guys are specific to a region. Very cool. Yeah. And uh, going to Hawaii was honestly like one of the biggest inspirations plant wise. Yeah, <laughs> which island were you? The big islands. Okay. So the island of Hawaii. And, um, I was in Kona and then in Hilo, which is on the other side of the island, there is a botanical garden. Ooh. It was like one gorgeous. of the most beautiful places I've ever been. It had this area where you just like meet the ocean mm -hmm. <laughs> from basically full on jungle. Oh wow. It was amazing. amazing. Like I highly recommend it to anyone who's into plants even remotely or just likes beautiful things. Like, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, go. It's so good. But um, that was, what, in May I went <laughs> and I already want to go again. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> that was like the first big vacation that I like paid for myself. Oh, it was awesome. A, <laughs> very satisfying. Yeah, it feels like adulting. You know? yeah. I'm like, I can I'm an adult this. Now. Yeah. I paid for my vacations. <laughs> I'm really glad that I like, I planned it before. Um, if you guys don't know, I was an Adobe Creative Resident last year, which is yes. an awesome, awesome program. Uh, where I basically got to live my dream and uh, and get paid for it. Oh my gosh, I got paid for it. They treated me to like all these trips, so I got to travel a lot more than I ever did before. 
And there was a point to what I was saying, something about it. Traveling, <laughs> paying for your own vacation. Oh, it was during the residency that I planned the vacation. Because I'm like, okay, if there's ever time to take a vacation, it's totally. right after the residency yeah. to just celebrate the heck out of it. Yep. You're like, I did the thing, yeah. Mm -hmm. Which current residents, if you're there, I really recommend that. Get yourself a vacation. Um, but it was something that I thought, oh, I don't have the time to do this. I'll just plan it afterwards. But I'm so glad I made myself do it yeah. because I would not have otherwise. I'd be like, yeah. no, I'm entering into a career. I have to save money. I have to do all <laughs> the things. Like, there's too much work to do. And just having it planned is like a lifesaver. Yeah, that's awesome. So I love the style that you're doing with this. It looks kind of like wood block or lino cut. Right. Style. This is um, something that I've been into lately is just using a straight up eraser tool to just like cut away at big brush strokes. Yeah, this is. Re I really like this. I'm enjoying it a lot. <laughs> it's very so beginning. Uh, we've got a question from Kelsey. Kelsey. Um, Kelsey's wondering if you start sketching on pen and paper and then scan it in, or if you just do the whole thing in Photoshop. So we yeah. have some people who want to know more about your process, which oh, I excellent. personally love hearing about uh, process, particularly for illustration, because you know there's certain there's certain like uh, like if you're designing sort of like an app or if you're designing a website or if you're like you know you there's do. certain there's like a very like yeah like what I do yeah. um, there's a certain process that you go through, but with illustration like there are a million different ways that you can can bring something together. Absolutely. Um, so I love hearing about process for illustration. So oh, I like that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I I have strayed away from doing traditional work for a while now just because, I mean, obviously being an Adobe Creative Resident, I was like, Adobe everything, mm -hmm. use it. But honestly, I'm so comfortable with um, <laughs> not having a physical sketchbook now. I remember in school, everybody was like, you have to have a sketchbook. Yeah. But um, what I love to do is create traditional feeling textures in Photoshop, which is easier and easier every day. Mm -hmm. Like every single update is, you know, more and more traditional feeling. And mm -hmm. then of course, Adobe Fresco, yep. which is my new favorite app ever. It's amazing. Aww. And <laughs> yeah, she's the mama of Adobe Fresco. <laughs> Fresco's my baby. <laughs> yes, and we'll be using that on Friday for a Better No Brush. Um, and that is all about brush strokes and making it feel really traditional mm -hmm. and just like getting into that texture and grit. And I absolutely love it. Or yeah. like the smoothness of watercolors. Right. That watercolor brush is just like. Yeah, so there's three different types of brushes. There's like all the pixel brushes, which were hand picked by Kyle. Uh, he like literally went through and like picked them all out. Of course, and he curated did. them. <laughs> yeah, there's tons of built-in brushes, and then we have the live brushes, which are watercolor and oils that blend and bleed just like they would in real life. Um, it's yeah. insane. And then there's also vector brushes, which is pretty crazy too. Absolutely. Um, for those and of you who like the vector goodness. And they all feel just like exactly what you would get from sketching in a sketchbook or painting on, you know, watercolor mm. paper, like toothy and wonderful. Yeah. So honestly, I feel like- It's like, like gooey, like you touch the, the screen of the iPad and you're like, hey, is it gonna be wet? <laughs> exactly, <laughs> like, mm, what is this? Uh, but the, um, the feeling of having a digital sketchbook or, you know, paint book, whatever you call it, mm -hmm. I, would I rather get out all my paints and do it traditionally or would I want to do that? A lot of times it's just ease. Yeah. <laughs> Although I do love working traditionally and honestly like lately I've been finding a traditional fix by doing sculptures. I've been oh. sculpting like out of Sculpey making little animals yeah. and then painting them and it just satisfies your brain in a way. Yeah. Like, I know that's really, that's really <laughs> common for pe people who are doing like character um, design and stuff like that. They'll like actually sculpt them so you can turn them around and see the angles. Exactly. Oh, it's key for character design. Mm -hmm. um, and James knows the name of a really fantastic uh, sculptor that worked on a lot of animated movies. James, throw that into the chat. <laughs> um, <laughs> but the the act of sculpting to me is like I can do it while I'm watching TV yeah. and feel like oh, I just made a cute little elephant. Totally satisfied. Yep. <laughs> like I got yep. it. <laughs> uh, so we have um, I forget who it was. Someone said that. Uh, oh, Kendall says that your mandrake <laughs> looks like the Pillsbury Doughboy. Uh, I'm very happy about that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, no, so I see that it. you have lock transparency turned on. Absolutely. When you were doing that. Is there a reason why you turn on lock transparency versus like doing a mask or a clipping mask? Or is it just kind of like... 
It's whatever catches my fancy. A lot okay. of times, uh, this is like straight up just two colors on mm -hmm. each of these layers. So I've got pink and purple up here and I've got some browns going on on his body. Totally. So uh, when it's just two colors, locking it is like the easiest way. By the mm -hmm. way, if you guys don't know, this is the pixel lock right here and it is life-saving. It is awesome. So basically, you, if I'm painting on here, it won't go, oh, oops. <laughs> New key commands on a Mac is just getting me. Um, it won't go outside of where I've painted before, mm -hmm. which is awesome. And then uh, sometimes I do clipping masks, which is when you have a new layer and then you alt hover between and you yeah. can clip it to it. And it does the same exact thing, but on a separate layer. And I've been using this a lot. I'm actually working on a children's book right now. Woo -hoo! Uh, and it requires some of like the lines to be locked to the color underneath, things like that. Yeah. And I absolutely love clipping masks for mm -hmm. that, where it's like, I need the lines to be separate. Yep. You know, I don't yeah. want to be It's again. a little bit less, <laughs> and like, I don't, like, it's 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 not destructive. Exactly. So essentially, like, you're, yeah, yeah, like, you're putting two colors on the same layer, and you can't ever undo that. Exactly. Which is okay for a lot of people. And a but. lot of times I do um, take a line and just color it. Like, mm -hmm. I can do, what is this? Command delete and oh, that filled with white. <laughs> uh, but you can fill all of yeah. the uh, lines with a color, uh -huh. and so that is something that I do a lot actually. Yep. Um, on this guy, I wanted a cleaner line than this, so I wanted to create another one, another layer, but gotcha. I switch between all the time. Yeah, <laughs> you kind of find your workflow as you go along. You with totally a lot of do, things. yeah. Um, so Christopher is asking the pixel lock. So the pixel lock, what it essentially does is it takes the the layer and it it, it locks the the transparency and as well as um, yes. It does. So so if you already have if you already have like paint or brush strokes on one layer, you can only paint at that same transparency um, within the bounds of the paint that's Whatever's already there. It's kind of a confusing. Yeah. It's a confusing concept until you actually use it, and then exactly. I think that you're like, oh, like... I totally get it. Hard to explain, very easy to show. Yeah. But um, if you guys have any questions about stuff like that, I'd be very happy to show you like little demos of how to do it. Yeah. Uh, and right now I'm just kind of adding these little hatch lines of like texture to this guy because mm -hmm. I felt like I I've been going for this kind of liney hand-drawn style lately. Um, and you'll see more of that on Better Know Brush this week. I made some brushes that kind of simplify this process of like hand doing every single line. Yeah. Um, but I still love it. It's kind of therapeutic to go in and be like, I think lines belong here. <laughs> yes. Your mandrake is looking a little bit more Pillsbury Doughboy ish. <laughs> I'm really liking it. As long as you're into it, feel free to tell me when you're like, I don't like it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> you can so, always tell so me. So we do have a couple people asking yeah. if you would like start a new layer and just kind of show the the uh, lock transparency or pixel lock oh, again yeah. if you wouldn't mind. You guys, this is super important. Like watch. <laughs> watch carefully. Okay, so um, let's draw a little since I said it, elephant. There's like legs and here's his head and a trunk. Yay. Aww. And I really like leaving like gaps in between stuff. Uh -huh. So it's not necessarily that you're filling like a fill bucket. You're just kind of leaving yep. some spaces for character. <laughs> uh, and then once that is drawn, you've just done it freely. You can pixel lock it and then use another color and just go right in there. And even though my brush is going way over it, like I'm still pressing hard like all yep. the way through, it doesn't go outside of the bounds of what I have. And then yeah. you can turn it back off and go outside the bounds. Yep. Now that's a little bit different. I'll show you the clipping mask as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, same layer, what I have painted here uh, freely, and then I just start a new layer Press Alt and hover co between them. I'm sure there's another way yeah, to do it. Yeah, you can see that little like square. One. Yeah, when you hover between them, there's this little symbol that comes up. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can click on and off. It's clipped, it's not. Uh, and then we'll use another color here. And it's the exact same thing. It just stays within the bounds. However, when you unclick this, press Alt again, yep. you can see you all can see of it. the outside mess. <laughs> yep. And then you can clip it right back on. So that has saved my life in so many ways yeah. throughout like all the jobs I've had. That's a huge, just shortcut, easy yeah. to do. Uh, one thing that I like the clipping mask for is if you're using texture. So, you know, sometimes I like to bring in an image for texture yeah. over something. You can use it as a clipping mask and then you can actually totally. like move it around and position it the way you Find want to. Find the right to. spot. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, there's just no end to like how useful it can be to you. And a lot of this is just playing around in Photoshop, but yeah. um, 
I think if you kind of mentally prepare yourself for like what a piece will be, especially when you're further along in your career, it just mm -hmm. feels like you, I don't know, you can kind of plan out exactly the steps that you're gonna take to make a piece happen. Yeah. And that's a shortcut mentally, because <laughs> a lot of art is just mental. Totally. Um, so Alexandra is asking, what is better know a brush? That is actually happening on Friday. Yeah, is it happening a new at show. 9.30? <laughs> what time is it happening? 9.30 to 10.30. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a new show on Adobe Live about brushes, basically. It's all dedicated to uh, what brushes can do for you. And all brushes, all the time. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> I feel like I'm selling it. Uh, no, you are. It's perfect. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Renee is going to be with me on that one. And we're going to be using Adobe Fresco, which used yeah. to be Project Gemini. So if you guys know anything about that, it yeah. is uh, my fave. It's I've awesome. actually seen a couple people in the chat who I know have access to it. Oh, excellent. Yeah. I love that. I like to chat with them. Yeah, you can get their feedback. Uh, still sign up for early access, Yes, right? you can. I would have to let me let me find out. I can I can tell you where to go to what? sign you up for early access. So you go to adobe.com/products/fresco, and there's a link there where you can sign up to get early pre-release access. I gave him a belly button. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Makes me happy. It's the little touches, you know. Cool. So we do have a couple people asking mm -hmm. questions about what the hardware that you're drawing on. Oh, this is a Cintiq, guys. This is a uh, Wacom Cintiq, I believe 22 HD, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, it's amazing. I absolutely love using Cintiqs. They are a tablet that you can draw directly on. So if you've ever seen the um, Intuos tablets, mm -hmm. they're basically drawing like, you know, tablet. Yeah. But it's connected to the screen. So there's a little bit of like, you're drawing here and looking there. Uh, this, you're just drawing straight on it like it was paper. It's its own thing. Absolutely. Yep. And I love them. Yep. Shout out to Wacom. They're amazing. Yeah. <laughs> they have an office in Portland, and I absolutely love it. Yeah, you can go in and try everything. Oh, uh, that's amazing. Portland, by the way. <laughs> that's a dream. Uh, awesome. And then we have some people who are asking about the um, iPad and the Apple Pencil, which I think. It's awesome too. I mean, that's what Fresco's um, coming out on first. And it's really nice. I know that some people, so one of the things that's awesome about the Cintiq is it has some like texture to it. Absolutely. And I know one of the things that people um, maybe don't like quite as much about drawing on the iPad is it has a really like smooth surface. Mm -hmm. But what I do is I actually have, um, it's like a it's like a cover. It's called paper like. You can buy it on Amazon, totally. and it makes it feel more like drawing on paper. I've heard, and that, that that's totally amazing. was a game changer for me. Absolutely. Yeah. There are so many things out there now. Like when I first started going to art school, there was nothing. I would die for an iPad in art school. Like, yeah. oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Because everybody was just like, okay, um, I signed up to become an artist. <laughs> I know what I want to do <laughs> now. How do I do it? Yeah. Uh, and in those few years, I went to school from 2009 to 2013 and it was a vast change in the technology that was available. Same thing happened when I was vegetarian as a kid. <laughs> it was like, oh, there are no God. options. And now it's like literally everything. There's yeah. options for like, oh, do I want a completely like realistic sausage? Yes, I can have that. And sometimes a vegetarian <laughs> option is like way better too. Oh my gosh. I, yeah, I'll never stop Who saying that. a little hamburger <laughs> when you can have the impossible burger? <laughs> Seriously, I know. And my husband's like a diehard meat eater, but yeah, he's like super into stuff that we've gotten. And I think that's the real testament is <laughs> like, yeah. Do people who love meat love it? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Even his dad, which, oh my gosh, he's like 10 times more into meat. <laughs> Pretty amazing. Cool. Um, so I do know that we have a couple of challenges going on today. Um, mm -hmm. One challenge is um, you build an illustration with layers, shapes, and colors. And I believe Kathleen was just announcing that one earlier, if you caught that. Um, so post it in the chat. I believe there's a starter file that you can access. I can't wait to see these And we're challenges. gonna be reviewing designs later yeah. as well. So post your stuff uh, on Discord. And then the other thing is we're doing a sticker giveaway from Sticker Mule, 100 die cut stickers. <laughs> I know, I'm so jealous. Right? <laughs> okay, so if you were to make a sticker, what would it be? Ooh, if I had to make a sticker, what would it be? That is a really good question. You guys can answer too. I know. Voodoo Val. What would it be like a uh, Kylo Ren mm, sticker? Voodoo Val loves bacon, so maybe <laughs> maybe a bacon sticker. <laughs> <laughs> just bacon stickers everywhere. That's the, the danger of illustrating food is you just get hungry all the time while painting. It. I know. That's why I'm like, oh man, if I want a milkshake, I should not draw a milkshake. Oh, I know. <laughs> 
Oh, so bad. So sticky. I don't know. I, w I think I want a, a sticker of the mandrake that you're drawing. Like, uh. I'm seriously so in love with it. <laughs> the colors are awesome. Oh, they're going to get more awesome. I'm going to add some more variety in here. But um, one of my favorite tools, speaking of, is uh, it, do you use soft light layers ever? Yes. Like, yeah, like just add a little zhuzh. Yep. Um, <laughs> this is one of my newest things that I'm into is um, I, I have gone for this very minimalist style where it's like, okay, here's a cute little thing. It relies more on the design than it does on like rendering. Mm -hmm. um, but within it, I, I got kind of bored when I was like, oh, there are two colors. So a way to like add little colors was just uh, getting a soft light layer, getting a big fat brush and just start throwing around some color and give it a little bit of uh, variety to it. That's like awesome. up yeah. here is a ton of pink. Let's like mm -hmm. toss some green in there and see what it does. And sometimes it's not the right layer. That's totally fine. Mm -hmm. Like the right type of layer, like sometimes uh, multiply will work better, sometimes overlay. Yeah, that's it's the thing depends. that I, I mean, I forget what the cook, is it like shift and plus? to like cycle through all the, oh, the layers. I, don't know. I can't and remember, I like I have to be on a keyboard. Like, mm, I think it's, yeah. <laughs> oh, actually when you have them highlighted, I think. Yeah, I think the, it's shift plus. Oh, I don't know if it works on a Mac. Uh, shift plus, is that a I thing? I think so. Um, but usually soft light does the trick for me. Yeah. I'm not loving what the green is doing up here, but it's it's fine because this is the entire point. It's just yep. to play around, just to see like what you want. And if I think, oh man, I really want this certain kind of green, mm -hmm. no reason not to just paint it in there. Like yeah. if I feel like I know what I want, the whole point of the soft light layer is I don't know what I want yet. Yep. <laughs> yep. So if I know, I'll make sure this is pixel lock so I don't paint outside the leaves. And then I'll just go for like a yellowy green. It's a little mm -hmm. muted. Whoops. And then go in there and just like splash some around. Yeah. And again, oh, that's very awesome. explorative, so. Yeah. <laughs> so when you're choosing colors, do you, are you just kind of like playing around with it or do you have any sort of process for choosing colors? There's a process somewhere. <laughs> Someone knows what it is. Now, I think uh, in general, I try to stick to, um, if I have reference, obviously I want to riff off of that. And then mm -hmm. uh, outside of that, I don't want to go too crazy with like multiple many colors just because mm -hmm. I feel like you can go multiple many colors after you have something on the page. I'm yeah. way into editing everything. Um, I'm actually gonna give a talk at Max this year about Ooh. editing your work and like training yourself to find like what you want to change and how to do that. Tons and tons of tips about that. That sounds awesome. It's gonna be fun because like I edit more than anything. I feel like I edit more than I paint. <laughs> Just really? because Yeah, because like, I mean, we threw this guy onto the page in what, like five minutes? Yeah. And now I'm, I'm literally in editing mode right now. I'm like, really? okay, what do I want to change? What do I yeah. want to like do to this guy? Yeah. How do you determine when, when something is done? I, for me, that's the hardest, <laughs> the hardest thing. I think oh, that's, that's a really good question and really hard to answer because it's different for every piece, I think. Um, but if it's something that I, it's about what I intend for it. And mm -hmm. it, this piece, I'm like trying to be loose. I'm trying to make it like real easy to go, you know, like through mm -hmm. all the processes of, um, and so what I would call this done is probably very different from like what I would call a full illustration that's like background and everything done. Um, right now I'm working on a really detailed one. Uh, I hope my mom isn't watching. It's for my mom. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> probably not. But um, by the way, a little side story. Uh, my mom found our last Adobe Live that I did last year, uh -huh. and she watched it like five times. She oh, was that's like, so Love cute. You. Aww. Like, mom, you're so sweet. It's so sweet. Uh, but anyway, so I'm making this piece for her, and it's her in the backyard. And I had just so much fun going crazy with foliage and mm -hmm. like rendering all these things. You can actually, I have um, up on my Patreon is where I'm posting all the work for that. And it's just like so overblown in the detail. Mm -hmm. Like, you could zoom in five times and still oh, not see awesome. everything. And so I'm kind of like, that's my going crazy. This might not be done when I think it's done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and sometimes you need a piece like that where you can just go back and just figure it out. That's, uh, again, why I always tout, like, have a personal piece going at all times. That's a really good suggestion. Yeah, because then you can take as long as you want on it. When yeah. you have deadlines, it's a very different process. Yeah, different um, process. And you're not going to go crazy because you can make it whatever you want. Exactly. Like, I think um, yeah. <laughs> you think, yeah. <laughs> I, I think I sometimes. I totally, yeah. Ooh, see, I just threw this like mid blue kind of saturated onto the green and I really like the color shift that's happening there from like a yellow yeah. green to a blue green. 
So I want more of that in this piece. Okay. And that's those happy accidents that happen with the soft light layer. Yeah. Oh, I see fireworks. It's chat and win time. Chat and win. Chat and win. <laughs> Tell me your Who Hogwarts wants... house. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you probably already did. Sorry. Oh, yeah. What's a Hogwarts house? <laughs> or what's another one? Well, uh, I mean, favorite we... character? Oh, favorite character is a good the one. I mean, there's a lot. <laughs> And um, favorite Marauder. Do you know anything about the Marauders? I don't know the Marauder. <laughs> this is their map. Uh, the the Marauders are basically like the prequel to Harry Potter, where it's uh, Harry Potter's parents. Mm -hmm. Well, James Potter was one of the Marauders. Anyways, there's a lot to explain with that one. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. I, I did read that Harry Potter's parents were killed in a war. A magic war? Am I getting this kind right? of? They're um, <laughs> they were more like assassinated by the leader of oh. the army. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, they died tragically. But they were part of uh, Dumbledore's army, mm -hmm. and so or uh, oh, not Dumbledore's army. What am I thinking of? Gosh. Um, anyways, uh, the Order of the Phoenix. That's what it was. Sorry, got mixed up. Uh, Order of the Phoenix was like the I don't know. What do you call it? The fighting against Voldemort group. Okay. <laughs> the resistance. They were part of that, and then Voldemort killed them. Oh, James says no spoilers. No spoilers. <laughs> That's like at the very beginning, though. <laughs> Come on. Uh, everybody chat and win. This yeah. is the time. Put something in so the chat. So tell me, oh, I guess that would be a spoiler. I was going to say everyone should post what they think I should know. If you say no spoilers, I'm I sure know. they'll, they'll put no good stuff up there. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna know the winner soon. Yeah. <laughs> Very excited. <laughs> oh, right. Luna, that's a good one. All right, I saw someone <laughs> who was chatting on here that won the stickers yesterday. I don't, can you win the stickers Chat twice? Probably Chat not. Probably not, I'm guessing. Maybe? No, you can only win them once. You can Just only once. win them yeah. once. I did reset it at the beginning of the year. Oh, okay. Like you can only win once, sorry guys. But that makes it better for everyone per else. Year. Kendall! Ah, yeah! Super girl! <laughs> yeah, get those stickers and send me one. I want yeah. them. <laughs> I know. I seriously awesome. do want a, a sticker of the Mandrake. I mean, let's make it happen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why not? All right. Kendall, you are the winner. Congratulations, Kendall. Congratulations. You're amazing. You deserve it. Yeah. <laughs> That's Tried awesome. But I do want to say, um, everyone who did not win, uh, you can go to stickermule.com slash adobelive19 for a deal. Uh, you get 10 stickers for $1. Which is, that's a pretty awesome deal. I'm not going to lie. That's what I'll do with this guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and the die cut stickers. Again, this is something Super kind cool. of new. Where yeah. it's like, I remember it being a million dollars to get a die cut sticker. I know. And now it's like, oh, no, you can just order them. It's fine. It's not yeah. ridiculously expensive. It's worth it. So. Yeah. Congrats, Kendall. Yeah. Got 100 stickers coming to you. Kendall, what's your sticker going to be? I want to know. <laughs> Kendall says, yay. <laughs> so we had someone, um, before we started the chat and win, we had someone asking that you turn, they're like, you turn your line work off. Is yeah. there a reason why you do that? It depends on the piece, again. Okay. Uh, sometimes I use the original line work as part of the painting and then just paint on top of it. For this one, I felt like I wanted a bit more um, deliberate marks. Okay. And I liked the sketch, but I liked the design of it. And the lines were cool, but they were a little bit messy in my opinion. <laughs> so I just decided I'm gonna do some new lines on top and now we're here. Nice. <laughs> but um, honestly, that comes down to your discretion. I think that using lines in your pieces, like from your sketch, is super cool. I love yeah. that look. Yeah. Um, there are some sketches by an uh, artist called Lois Van Barl, or Loish, if you mm -hmm. know her. Yes. Um, yeah, she has done some sketches, and she does a lot of really fully rendered paintings that mm -hmm. are absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. But some of my favorite work from her is when she uses a sketch and paints over it. There, mm -hmm. um, if you've ever seen Battlestar Galactica, she did some mm -hmm. characters from that that are absolutely stunning. Just Google oh, awesome. like Lowish Battlestar Galactica, and they look like the characters. Yeah, which is insane to me. Like getting likenesses is so hard. Yeah, um, and it, you, but it's like her loops. name is spelled L O I S H, I believe. Yeah, that's yep. like her online if you name. Check her out. But she's gonna be at Lightbox this year. Do you yes. know about Lightbox? Yes, I'm 
You're gonna go? Most likely gonna be there. Do You're it. gonna be there, yes, right? Yes, I'm yep. totally going. Yeah, which yeah. is this new like art convention that's happening. Yeah. Uh, Bobby Chu is running it, mm-hmm. and I'm just like super into it. Yeah. Because I know Bobby, and I know most of the artists going, and I'm yeah. just like big reunion. So Loish awesome. is actually gonna be at the Adobe. Uh, booth. No way. Yeah, drawing oh with us. Oh my gosh. She's yeah. like super celebrity in yeah. the art world. Super awesome. excited. <laughs> yeah, we've got a really cool lineup. We were just chatting about it yesterday. So come to Lightbox. It's in Pasadena. Yeah, Pasadena. That's going to be a really fun one. I'm so in grateful September. I live on the West Coast. Like, I know. So much yeah. happens here. <laughs> that is true. It's a lot. But um, yeah, that one's going to be really fun. Uh, and then I've got Max later in the year. And so there's just like, there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on. (laughs) There's so much. Are you going to Max at all? I am going to Max. I'll see you there too. We're going to just have a party all the time. We're going to have a Brook and Anna party. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Cool. I love it. Uh, Devin is asking uh, what the event is called. It's called Lightbox. And it's in Pasadena. Lightbox Expo, I believe. Yep. And... uh, like just trust me there is like every artist even if you don't recognize artist names you're gonna see artists you love there there's mm-hmm. so many there's a ton of people there I'm um, um, looking back at the reference by the way okay. just to make sure I'm like on the right path with these leaves they're very they look gorgeous <laughs> I, I actually really like the green that you included in there it's even cooler with mm-hmm. this in my opinion where mm-hmm. it's got that blue to green it's like my favorite color combo if you look at my ring that's like my oh yeah my stone nice ah. <laughs> tourmaline I don't know how to say it properly, but that's how I say it. <laughs> that's awesome. All right, at some point in time, we are gonna be checking out uh, the feedback from the daily challenge, which is Yay. combining shapes uh, in, to create a, a poster. I mean, shapes style is thing. like the key to art. <laughs> I know. Get those good shapes going. You what are you talking down. about? We don't need shapes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, where we're going. <laughs> Yeah. Need shapes, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm actually starting to teach a character design class that I'm pre-recording for SBSLearn.com, oh, cool. which is an online school. It's fantastic, um, but it's like so much of it comes down to shape. Like yeah. character design, it's all about them shapes, man. Yeah. Um, which this was kind of a good exercise in. If you look back at, let's turn all this mess off. All these guys that just mm-hmm. like shape designs, like it's yeah. really easy. And well, I noticed too when you start off drawing that elephant, you drew like <laughs> circle, circle, circle lines, and like you sort of like sculpt- you know you were talking about sculpting <laughs> earlier, but like really yeah. like bringing together um, like an animal or a person is really just sculpting different shapes together in Absolutely. ways that makes sense. Yeah, and it, like especially sculpting, you like cut down half the time if you know I'm gonna have a round character. You just make yep. a ball. Like, yep. totally. <laughs> okay, there you yep. go. <laughs> Which, uh, if you guys haven't sculpted lately, I highly recommend just picking up some Sculpey. It's yes. so fun, and for the amount of like money that it costs, it's like fifteen d- bucks for a pound of clay. Yeah, which it's a lot. It's like if you, yeah, exactly. If it, you do like small sculptures uh-huh. like I do, it can last a really long time. Yeah. You bake it in the oven. It's like the easiest thing. I love it. You make like Christmas ornaments for your mom. You can make anything. <laughs> you can make earrings I've seen people make. Yeah. Um, Sarah Kosico is a fantastic artist also. She made Hagrid pins out of sculpting. Oh, believe. super it's cool. Like amazing. Which, yes, I did sketch Hagrid because he's one of my favorite characters. But <laughs> we decided on Mandrakes. I also was going to do this full on like illustration full blown of um, Wiz- Weasley Wizard Wheezes, which is, there are these Say that three times fast. <laughs> <laughs> Don't t- tempt me. <laughs> no, uh, it's basically like a joke slash candy shop kind of tricks and stuff um, that the Weasley twins made. And the Weasley twins are like the most mischievous of the main characters, okay. basically. Like they just have hijinks and sue between them. Mm. And so they open up this joke shop after dropping out of school. <laughs> and uh, it's just this basically like wildly fantastic place where there's stuff flying around and like fireworks are going off and they have, you know, just all these things going on. So it was like a really fun idea to illustrate. Yeah, for sure. And then I decided I only have a few hours. (laughs) Like, uh, I don't think I'll have time for that. Let's do mandrakes. (laughs) But um, yeah, I did Hagrid. I did that. I did a Dobby one. You guys want to see Dobby? Yes. Do you know about Dobby at all? He's a house elf. The yeah the yes go. I do know Dobby. <laughs> That's Dobby, and my That's take so on cute. him. So cute. He's a little scary. In the movie. I, yeah, I was gonna say I thought he was kind of a scary, weird. <laughs> he's a little weird, but um, he's 
ultimately a very wholesome character. Mm -hmm. He just loves Harry so much. And in this one, he's wearing a million clothes because Hermione, okay, so the way you free a house elf, this is like an easy one to explain. So how you free a house elf, which they are kind of slaves to their owners, okay, um, is you present them with a piece of clothing. Their owner oh, has to present it, I okay. suppose. And so there are tons of house elves that work at Hogwarts. And Hermione, one of the characters, mm -hmm. uh, she decides she wants to free all the house elves that work at Hogwarts. So oh. she keeps leaving clothes around so that they pick them up Aww. and like are freed. Oh, that's really sweet. <laughs> and Dobby loves being a free elf. He's actually the only one at the school who gets paid. And <laughs> all the other house elves are like, you get paid? What a disgrace. That's so <laughs> weird. Like they love being basically slaves. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, anyways, it's so do you want to hear some uh, cool Kyle Webster trivia? Uh, what? Yeah. Always. So, Kyle's daughter is named Hermione. Oh my gosh! Really? After Harry Potter, oh, so he is it. a big Harry Potter fan as well. Oh, I I already love Kyle, but like yeah. that just makes it overboard. <laughs> <laughs> that is so cool. I <laughs> I always think about like, okay, what would I name my kids? And you kind of go to fandoms. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, my first pet was uh, my cat, and I named him Vicious after the villain in uh, <laughs> villain, which is like this <laughs> tiny, adorable kitten. I'm like, you're a villain. Uh, in Cowboy Bebop, have oh. you ever heard of that? Mm -mm. Oh, it's like the best anime. It's awesome. Um, but it was goofy because he grew up to be the sweetest, most cuddly Aww. little kitten ever, and his name was Vicious. <laughs> like, planned it. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> it's like the Great Dane named Tiny, you know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I had a, a the idea of like, okay, what Harry Potter like character would I want to name something after? But honestly, like for pets, James and I have agreed that we're gonna go for food names. <laughs> that's pretty like, good. Yeah, we're gonna have for sure so, a corgi named Mochi. It's gotta happen. That's a good one. It's too cute. <laughs> uh, I live close to. Um, a, I was gonna say I live close to a dog named Miso, but I live close to people who have a dog named Miso. <laughs> I mean, like, technically, yeah, I also live close there. to Miso. <laughs> <laughs> that is an adorable one, Miso. Yeah. And then I love uh, bubble tea, so I always thought if I could like, I really want to just adopt an old cat and like give it the best end of life ever <laughs> and name it uh, Boba Fat. <laughs> that's <laughs> Instead awesome. Of Boba Fat. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> yes, and um, I don't know, there are so many more ideas for like pet names. Just yeah. Try out pet names if you got goofy ones. Oh yeah, good pet names. That's all, I feel like that there's, I think there's like almost more pressure to come up with a cool pet name than like a, a baby name. Because <laughs> the world's open, you know? Yeah, I mean like the, the pet doesn't care what their name, but the kids you're like, ah, are they no. gonna be made fun of when they're in middle school? But, if, but a pet, you're like, you can, the world is your oyster. Exactly, now you can do literally anything. Um, there was a dog that I can't remember the name of anymore, but I called it in my mind Sirius Black all the time. So I, I just wanna call it Sirius Black. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm like, uh, well, it's not its real name, but I can't remember. <laughs> Darn it. We've got some uh, great names. We have Zorro. Zorro. Oh. Uh, Zorro has a black mask. band across his face. I love it. We've got oh. Gringo. Snickers. <laughs> <laughs> Snickers, just like. Gizmo. You're angry. You just Rango. Gizmo. Oh, man. Oh, Rango, man, I never saw the movie. Yeah, it's a, it's got a lot of good names. Again, the world is your oyster with pet names, so I'm not surprised. I'm just proud <laughs> of all of you. <laughs> I think that uh, that's one of the reasons that I want a lot of pets, <laughs> honestly, is just to give them cool Come names. Come up with crazy names. One of the many reasons, obviously, I just love animals. But, oh, that's you know. funny. <laughs> oh, I thought I thought Kendall said that uh, they named their dog after uh, Raspberry Pi, but they named their dog after a Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi, that's like the... Um, Razzy for short. Mr. Whiskers, Jordy. Mr. Whiskers. I do love <laughs> Ker a Mr. Kerwin name. says, <laughs> my dog's name is Cat. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> okay, have you seen Good Omens? No. Oh, man. I, I feel like I... Gotta I'm, see everything. I know. We need like a hardcore Netflix session. <laughs> I know. Well, here's the weird thing is I grew up without a TV, and so like I missed out wow. on like basically all of pop culture of the 80s and early 90s. Yeah, and that's then what like we'll do. I feel like some people who grew up without a, a television or without movies, like then they just go like crazy. You know, it's like if you, if you don't give a kid sweets and then you give oh, them no. sweets, that's all they want. But like totally. I, for some reason, was the other way. Like I still don't watch that much TV. I think that's a good thing in many ways. So like more power to you. I don't know. Because <laughs> being obsessed with television, I don't like 
I don't agree with that, but I do like um, like segmented times where you're like, okay, I'm doing yeah. this, and yeah. like it's for something, not just sitting there zoning. Yeah. But then I miss out on all the references, you know? That's kind of the bummer. <laughs> I felt that really hard when uh, Game of Thrones was ending. And yeah. I couldn't handle it past the Red Wedding. Like, I am I just can't handle a lot. Uh -huh. <laughs> like, I'm pretty soft. So uh, that one, I was just like, okay, I'm over. I can't do this. Yeah. And then when it was happening, it was all everybody talked about. Yeah. Like, oh, like, literally, like, here at Adobe, we'd walk, I'd walk past people in the halls, <laughs> and we were, like, You're discussing like... the characters and the last. You're um, not invited. You don't know. <laughs> so my my Game of Thrones story is like I hadn't watched any of them up until our neighbors uh, at the end of the seventh season they're like hey we're having a, a watch party you want to come oh. and we're like well we've never seen it but yeah sure we'll come and then we got obsessed with it so we had to go back and watch all of them seriously <laughs> yeah. they indoctrinated you yeah so, so my first Game of Thrones <laughs> was the last episode of the seventh season that's so weird how was it like going backwards from there uh, I I actually kind of enjoyed it. Really? Yeah. I'm just like yeah. <laughs> I feel like you can do that with certain shows. Some of them it would make like no sense. Like you started with the biggest spoiler ever. Yeah. Like, twist. You know. Yeah. But um, I think that Game of Thrones. I don't know. Sometimes I'm tempted because everybody still it's like in the zeitgeist. Yeah. So you're just like okay to get everything I have to be part of this. Yeah. But. I know that I would just cry and be sad. <laughs> and I've decided like the best thing I can do for myself is just watch shows that make me happy. Yeah. And like fill my brain with good stuff. Yeah. Um, and that's something that uh, if you guys haven't seen Queer Eye, that is like my, oh my feel gosh, good yeah. show. That I'm is a just, feel good show. I could watch that a million times. And yeah. I'm just so happy. And then it reminds me like, okay, I don't need those hardcore dramas or anything. Yeah. <laughs> that being said right now, I'm watching Band of Brothers, which is like, <laughs> <laughs> like really hardcore World War II stuff. But Yeah. We've got more, yeah. more pet names in the chat. We have Pliny. Pliny. That's a good one. Mr. Pink. Speedy. Mr. Mr. Oh, no, not Mr. Ridgeback. Leo the Lionhound. That's a good one. Oh, man. Oh, and you're talking about Stranger Things in the chat. Don't do yeah. that. I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> Have you seen any Stranger Things? Um, I watched one a while ago. I know One episode? Yeah. <laughs> How can you do that? Like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't understand. Especially with that show. Was it first season? I don't even remember, honestly. It was like yeah. one of those, like, it was on. I was just like, yeah, sure. I'll sit down and watch it. <laughs> Wow, that is so like I don't lame. Know. No, no, it's not at all lame. I love everybody's individual quirks. Like, oh, I'm just not a TV or a yeah. movie person, whatever. Um, that's totally fine by me. But the thing is, with that particular series, I could not stop watching. Oh, really? Or, especially first season. Mm -hmm. I was just like, what happens next? What is it? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, and that's why, well, we're having a watch party at our apartment for the oh, season awesome. three. So, right when I get back from this trip, I'm immediately watching watch Stranger party. Things. Watch <laughs> party. <laughs> and I guarantee you, after people leave, because it's way too late, I'm going to watch the rest of the series. You know, yeah. like, I'm just going to keep going. That's how I was with um, with Mad Men oh, really? when that came out. Like, I would, See, like, literally. See, you've a lot of stuff, actually. Like, that's pretty good. Yeah, but Game I, of Thrones, I, Mad Men. Yeah. I, Mad Men was interesting to me because my, my background is, like, design agency. Yeah. Like, that's what I came from. And so I was like, oh, my. You know, like, it's, like, my thing. Yeah, But, like, totally. literally, like, before every... I'm trying to remember how many seasons there were. There were quite a few. I would watch every episode up until that season each time. <laughs> so, like, I've seen all of them, like, three or four times. Wow. Okay. Well, you're dedicated to one show. I am dedicated <laughs> to one show. Got it down. But, yeah, I do that, too. We just watched uh, Over the Garden Wall for the... 15th time probably <laughs> um that's a cartoon network series highly highly recommend it Very it cool. is um like 10 years in the making i think it oh, took wow. to make it and it's like it shows every episode is super quality like they pack a ton of stuff into it and it takes like if you're watching all the episodes since they're mm -hmm. like seven minutes each mm -hmm. something like that it takes like an hour and a half to watch all of it oh cool that's a good one it's fantastic. that sounds like my jam <laughs> and it's very like halloween -y, so i oh, always cool. recommend watching it around halloween yeah and I think it costs like 10 bucks to get the DVD. So I'm yeah. like, there's really no reason not to watch it. It's awesome. Yeah. So um, a question I wanted to ask you from a while back that I never got around to asking you. Oh, I think yeah. I got distracted by something. I Who probably knows interrupted. What? So Animal names or whatever. <laughs> um, someone wanted to know how you choose your brushes. 
I and actually, that, yeah, that's an interesting one because, sorry, were you gonna say something? Oh no, I was gonna say like, there are tons of brushes and I, I actually kind of find myself in, in that problem, in the like the analysis paralysis, like, oh no, there has, <laughs> maybe there's a better brush than the one I'm using. That's um, so funny. You're just like, <laughs> there could potentially be something out there that's like, yeah. I don't know. I, I feel like if your brush is feeling like it's holding you back, I can understand that. Yeah. But, Almost every brush. If you've seen Pascal Campion paint, yeah, he's also going to be at Lightbox with us. Of course, yeah, gotta love him. Actually, we're repped by the same agency, so that's oh, how really? I'm going to like break the ice. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> Pascal, he's such a sweet guy. Such a sweet guy. <laughs> Absolutely, uh, and I think I've talked to him before at CTN, but you never know if people like remember you at yeah. conventions and stuff. Yeah, for sure. Um, but the the thing with his work is he uses any brush. Literally, mm -hmm. like it doesn't matter what he's using because all of his stuff is so design based. Yeah. And sometimes he goes for texture and things like that, but a lot of times it's just free flowing, mm -hmm. like default brush, gonna make it happen fast yeah. and it's beautiful. So um, that's one end of the spectrum. Yeah. And then of course there are others who live and die by their brushes, which I totally love the traditional field brushes. And I think that's why one of the biggest benefits to Adobe in general is Kyle Webster. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just like these brushes make Photoshop so much. Yeah. Like it's, it's just so beautiful. Yeah. Uh, Kyle is insane. Right Do you know he's made like over a thousand brushes? I believe it. And like still, like I think what, twice a year or four times a year, he comes out with like seasonal brushes. Absolutely. And it's like, like how does I mean, this happen in your mind? Kyle, that's um, what he does. <laughs> if, you, if you have not, he did a talk at 99U about oh, the value of being bored. I was there for that. Yeah, so and it's good. really good. He's like, basically the way he came up with an idea for one of his brushes he talks about is like he was sitting at lunch and he had had some like beets that were in like oil and vinegar. Yeah. And he looked down at the, the beet sort of like bleeding into the oil and vinegar and that was an idea that he like he made a brush. Yeah, he's like, oh, that's that. a brush. I got it. Yeah. <laughs> now his mind works in beautiful ways. I'm just yeah. like, okay, I love that. Mm -hmm. And it's a common thing that I've seen between him and my mentor Lee White, um, who is a children's book illustrator. He's been doing these illustrations, and he was like, you know what the inspiration for this one was? The salad dressing in a bottle, and it separated, and it had oh, these different wow. layers of tones. Yeah. And he was like, that's what I based with this illustration. On. That's so cool. <laughs> and I feel like that's. It's just a, a kind of artist that can really see inspiration in anything and be like, those colors, those values, like yeah. that's what I want, yep. that texture. And to do something about it, I think, is the difference between like being an observant person and being like artist. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Because <laughs> people can see stuff everywhere and they're just like, I'm going to make a brush. I'm going to make an illustration. Yeah. So cool. Yep, totally. Um, so we have a good question here for you, Anna. Yeah. Um, Voodoo Val wants to know, Voodoo what's Val? it like to be represented by an agency, and how would you go about finding one for yourself? Like, how would you go about finding one? Totally. Um, well, I have a bad uh, example <laughs> because Lee, my mentor, mm -hmm. literally got me my agent. He okay. was uh, my mentor through the residency and just like in life. <laughs> yeah. He was my teacher before that. And he was like, oh, hey, I showed your work to Shannon Associates, which is my agency. And they said they would be happy to represent you. Let's have some talks. And then I talked to the agent. We meshed and it was just like off to the races. That's awesome. So um, to find an agent, I think going to conventions where they are and getting your work in front of them is the most important thing where it's like make personal contact as much as possible mm -hmm. but most importantly get your art in front of their eyeballs. Yeah, that's great advice. It's hard to do. Yeah, like, for sure because I'm sure everyone's <laughs> vying for absolutely. that same thing. And I mean it can be as subtle as like, oh my portfolio is on the table. Tilt, hint, open. Hint, hint. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, it's just one of those things that you kind of have to Get over any shyness and promote yourself mm -hmm. really hard. Yeah. <laughs> Lightbox, I, no, they're not going to have agents there. But there are certain conventions that do have agents. I go to SCBWI quite often. Um, I'm actually going in August, so that's going to be my oh, next cool. trip. <laughs> nice. Which is the Society for Children's Book Writers and Illustrators. <laughs> that's a mouthful. <laughs> Very much so. They need <laughs> rebranding. But um, that one is rife with tons of agents and publishers and people from anywhere in the children's book industry. Okay. So if you're trying to get agented for children's 
books, that's a great place to go for sure. Um, but other than that, like cold emails can really work. Yeah. Uh, my experience so far with being with the agency, which we really picked up working together in like May, so it hasn't been that long, but it's already been great. Like I'm working on a children's book right now that they brought to me. Yay. And then the other thing, I got an email from somebody who was like, I want you to work on this board game. And I love Oh my games. gosh. I feel like that's a dream. Oh, seriously. And it was, I was just like, oh my gosh. Okay, don't get too excited. Wait. <laughs> and then let me think about it. Yes, 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 yes. yes. <laughs> I got to say like the dream line, like you can contact my agent, you know, yeah. <laughs> that kind of thing. Obviously, very nicely. I was like, here's you know his email, and he'll contact you and all this jazz. And it actually worked out. I'm gonna do that's board game. awesome. So Yay. I'm super excited about that. Yay. Um, but that was something where they came to me, and I could point them to my agent. So that's one way of getting work. And then the other part is the agent bringing work to you and saying, do you want to work on this? Gotcha. Um, it feels like a wonderful relationship where they can handle a lot of the negotiating which artists hate doing like yeah. across the board <laughs> yep. um, but it is something that uh, it can be uh, like sometimes you have work sometimes you have too much sometimes you have too little so I wouldn't mm -hmm. say it's exactly the same as working at a studio where they're constantly bringing you something mm -hmm. um, but my experience so far has been overwhelmingly positive so that's awesome thank you Justin so yeah so <laughs> they so they they bring work to you they help negotiate the contracts they can, can you yeah. go to them and say like hey I want to I want to do something for this you know, this author or this person or this agency or whatever, and yeah. they also help make the connection? I haven't tried being like, oh, I want to work with this person yet, but okay. another thing I should have mentioned, um, I made a book dummy last year, which is basically mm -hmm. like a whole children's book, but in sketches and yep. then a few finished pieces. And he is currently pitching that to publishers. So oh, that's cool. a whole other aspect that's of awesome. it. That's awesome. So yeah, it's somebody out there like pushing your name, pushing your work and uh -huh. saying, hey, uh, basically, the, the value of an agent is they right. have connections. They're known by uh, yeah. people who are in the publishing industry. So if they're like, hey, buddy, I know you very well. I know you'd like this artist. I know you'd like her book. Mm -hmm. That's a lot better than yeah, a cold email totally. of me being like, I'm a stranger. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, that's where it makes a huge difference. And it also just helps to have somebody to bounce ideas off of yeah like he knows what sells in the market much more than i do totally. so i could be like um opinions yeah <laughs> like one of our first chats was about my portfolio and oh. he was like like okay, suggestions so of how to make it better or? absolutely yeah it was um like little things like oh if you change her eyes in this picture it wouldn't be so stylized mm -hmm. that it scares off clients because sometimes they need to see exactly what they want to see in your work <laughs> Yeah. Clients can be a little bit like, you know, oh, if they didn't draw this exact thing, I don't know if they can. And all artists are like, yeah, I can. What? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Just imagine it. That's awesome. Um, but yeah. Um, so Kendall wants to know more about your publishing process. The publishing process? What about it? There's so much. <laughs> There's literally so many parts of publishing. Um, I, I haven't been published yet on my own book. I'm just like pushing it to uh, publishers. So far on the other book that I'm working on, not my original one, but a different one, um, it is way more laid back than I was expecting, where okay. they like, it's just you emailing with an art director and being like, here's what I got, what do you think? And they're like, cool, uh, here are minor changes, awesome. Like it's yeah. it's very person to person oh, instead really of nice. being like here's a massive publisher and it's yeah. scary. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm happily surprised by that. It might not be that way for every project, but okay. Again, so far this is my experience. <laughs> yeah, very cool. It's been fun so far, and I really hope that like there are so many artists that I've talked to, like Kyle Webster. I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, I know you for your brushes. He also made a children's book. Yep. And it's please say please. please say I please. have that. It's awesome. And uh, it's just one of those things where you talk to artists in the, like this industry and animation and they have done children's books. It's kind of yeah. amazing how many people I, have. I think it's like a thing, like a rite of passage or it's something. A thing. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, it totally is. It's yeah. something that um, I think almost everybody has some idea of a good book uh -huh. and they're like, okay, what do I have to do to make this happen? And especially when they're in the industry, they can make those connections a lot faster. Yeah. Be like, yeah, you'll pick up my book because you know mm -hmm. my work. Yeah, totally. Uh, we have someone, uh, Mads is asking, off topic, do you practice figure <laughs> drawing? Figure drawing, I, I like most artists, I should practice it more. <laughs> <laughs> but it's something that um, every once in a while I'll start drawing 
not necessarily a figure for a figure's sake. It's more like uh, I have an idea of a costume that I want to put on a character. So I draw their figure first and then I put mm. the costume over it because mm -hmm. that's just my process. Um, and that kind of thing is kind of rare right now just because I'm bogged down by a lot of work. Mm -hmm. um, but my friend Anthony just went to a figure drawing class with one of my previous teachers, Zavu, who is also an animator at Disney. She's a fantastic oh, cool. oil painter. She does a bunch of stuff. But um, him going through that process, and he would come over after every class, every Tuesday, he'd be like, this is what we learned today. And I feel like him going through that revitalized my interest mm -hmm. in doing figure studies again, where I'm like, oh, man. I wonder how that would be. Cause I remember the last time I went back to a figure drawing class, I was so rusty. Like, yeah. I literally was just like, how did this come out of my hand? I can draw other stuff. Yeah. Why did this figure turn out so lopsided? And weird? Yeah, you fall out of practice really early and it really yeah. is a muscle, you know? I, I think totally that's one is. of the biggest things is, um, People are like, oh, you know, they look at, at what you're doing right now and you've like pulled that together in what, an hour or less than that. <laughs> Should have done more. Because we've been chatting, yeah. you know, a whole <laughs> lot. Um, but they're like, oh, you're just good at it. No, it actually like takes a ton of practice. It's just like a sport. Absolutely. Like no one goes out and is like a basketball NBA star from day one. Like Absolutely. you practice and practice and practice. And I think that's one of those things that we, we look at, you know, illustration or design and it's easy to say, oh, you're just good. You know, yeah, you're like, oh, good. you're just born talent. Yeah. Talent is like one of my least favorite words, honestly, because I much rather people say you're very skilled because I didn't get here just like doing stuff mm -hmm. like, oh, I just liked drawing and then boom, was here. Yeah. It's like you have to think about it a lot. You have to gather information from your peers about what will get you to that next step, mm -hmm. which is what I love seeing from a lot of you guys in the chat and like just people learning to art <laughs> yeah. is like, always keep asking questions and yep. at no point in your career should that stop like yeah always try to push further and beyond <laughs> yeah i'm rebalancing out the leaves here a little bit yeah i was gonna say like, you're doing that um yeah. one thing i do want to do voodoo val thank you for the reminder we have 30 minutes until challenge feedback so Yay! Uh, the challenge is build something with shapes and color um and post it on discord shapes and color and we'll go through and review Mountain. that stuff uh i would love to see Let's see, shape and color, what would you say is your favorite? Blue circle, I think that's me. I love blue circles. Yeah, I've been really into um, sort of like like fiery orange, Ooh. like kind of red fiery orange like colors that. lately. Yeah. Maybe it's just because it's summer, I don't know. Totally. I and mean, also like summer in San Francisco, I don't, summer in Portland's really nice. Summer in San Francisco is like, gray and foggy. <laughs> that's so weird. <laughs> Opposite of Portland. I know, you get oh. jealous. So oh, I, need, yeah. I need bright colors to get me through. That's a totally <laughs> like a tactic <laughs> to trick your mind. Just be like, no, yeah. it's summer. But um, yeah, I love that was uh, the Weasley Wizard Weezes piece was all this like pink to orange. And I love that combination mm -hmm. where it's just like that flow of corals and salmons and yeah. all that stuff. This is um, so magenta. Devin is asking, what's our server for Discord? Um, I'm trying to remember. What the best way, maybe we can post that in the chat, how to get Discord. Get that Discord. Yep. I'm gonna add some baby leaves down here. Oh, those are cute. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I'll make them green or something. Yeah. Um, but the Discord idea is great, I think, honestly, to like make a community chat around yeah. all these things that we're doing. Yep. And, oh, hey, oh. Discord, we got yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> popped up. I love that. It lead slash PS Discord. PS for Photoshop. <laughs> oh, there we go. Boop, boop. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I can't wait to see what you guys design. Like shape and color, that's so open. You can do whatever you want with that. Yep. Have you ever seen uh, Parks and Rec? <laughs> yes, thing? I have seen Parks and Excellent. Rec. I used to live in Indiana, so it was like... How true to life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is it actually like, oh, there's... Yeah, it's, it was Leslie actually no? pretty close, to be quite honest. I love that. Oh my gosh. What was their motto? It was like, uh, first in friendship, fourth in obesity. Yeah. <laughs> so good. I'm re-watching that right now with James and... Um, what was it? Oh, they had this contest of what mural should be done for the Parks and Rec wall. Mm -hmm. And uh, Tom Haversford had an artist come in and do a mural for him because he was cheating, obviously. Mm -hmm. And it was all these like abstract shapes and stuff. And then he was like, this is trash. And then he looked at it later and he's like, but the shapes. 
The colors, <laughs> they speak to me. I had an emotional reaction to art. What is this? <laughs> And I like think he might episode. be one of my favorite characters, actually. Oh my show. gosh, I oh, it's a hard one for that one. I there's like always a Leslie Nope love in my yeah. heart. I'm just like, like there's I've been watching a lot of panels also lately where they talk about how um, the show was and just the ins and outs of it. And they talk about how similar they are to the characters that they portray. And uh -huh. almost every single one of them is, like, spot on. Really? Like, Ron Swanson's a woodworker yeah, in the is. show because uh, Nick he, Offerman is. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, oh, I was making a canoe while I was talking to the showrunners. Like, that, <laughs> that became the character. No it's big deal. So yeah, cool. that's funny. Uh, and just, you know, the whole idea that Leslie's an overachiever and she, like, on the show is a writer, producer, actor. Yeah. Like, everything. Yeah. <laughs> she directs them. And is it... Um, isn't Ron actually married to the Megan woman? Megan Yes. Yeah, it's uh, Tammy from the library. Yeah. <laughs> so good. Uh, yeah, the whole thing just makes me so happy. That's another wholesome show that I can yeah. always watch and just be like, this makes me happy. When I stop watching it, I'm like in a better mood. <laughs> yeah, totally. Which is what you need, man, in this life of ours. Yeah. <laughs> so tell me about, and maybe maybe there is no like specific uh, thought behind this, but tell me about like you're adding some of the pink down to the mandrake. Is it just to kind of like bring the pink down so it's all kind of tied together visually? Yeah, just to kind of, I, I was feeling like um, without, well, here, let's, we've got the soft light layer above mm -hmm. everything, and then I added this little hint of pink down here. Yep. Um, I felt like it was just too blank in the center right here. Yeah. It just felt a little bit too um, it needed something. unfinished, yeah. <laughs> you know? Totally. And then I added some of that magenta down here and put it on real low opacity. This is 35%. Okay. And then uh, these are some of the light lines and dark lines. I've got yep. several line layers now. You yeah. guys can see the chaos that happens when I'm painting. It's like, I need a new layer. Boom. Wherever yeah. it is. Do you ever stays. name your layers? I For know. clients, yes. Yeah. I was going to say, <laughs> I know a lot of people, they're like, uh, yes. I mean... <laughs> It Sometimes. really depends on the piece. Like that mom piece I was talking about where uh -huh. it has like tons and tons of detail in it. It's like literally I'm just painting on top of yeah, everything. Yeah, you just add, 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 add. Yeah, and it eventually when you do it chaotically like that, you just have to collapse a bunch. Mm -hmm. And then you're like really in danger territory. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But if that's the style of the painting, I get comfortable with it real fast. I'm mm -hmm. just like, you know, if I want to change it, I'm going to paint it. Yeah. And that's just what's going to happen. Yeah. So I'm curious in the chat, do you guys name your layers? Do you organize them? Do you group them? I'm one of those people I don't typically name my layers, but I name groups. <laughs> totally, yeah. No, I do that too. I've, um, again, on the book I'm working on, I have like very clear, like character background uh, sky or whatever. Yeah. And that keeps it very easy. Yeah. And especially for working in publishing, you never know if they want that character moved an inch to the right. You don't want to yeah, do you don't like, want that mess. lasso yeah. tool, try to paint in background. Like it's not worth it. So yeah. it's very, very important to keep it on separate layers for that. Totally. Uh, I like Nicole's response. She said, naming layers is like flossing teeth. I know I need to, but sometimes I forget. <laughs> That's totally too right. Perfect. <laughs> I love it. Oh man, just thought about that the other day. I ate some popcorn and I was like, really? Need to yeah. Pause. How long has it been? That's not good. Oh. Ugh. Let's not think about the, our responsibilities. Jordan, that Jordan's done. the person that we all want to be. I always name my layers and organize them. I even group them. Well, good on wow. you. We will always aspire to be like Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> Let's make a sticker of that. Let's be like Jordan. <laughs> uh, my friend Anthony is a photo retoucher, and for that, they need everything oh, to be really totally. organized yeah. and like perfectly everything because they, you know, toss files to each other. Which, yep. if you don't organize your files before giving them to a coworker, you're a jerk. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you gotta do it. I back in the day, I back in the day when you would do web design in Photoshop. Um, I got really good at naming my layers because I had a coworker who did not name layers and we would work on each other's pieces. Oh, nice. And I would get his files and I was just like, I Ooh. don't, like, I don't even know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> Where do I start? Yeah. Well, you'd have to, like, go, like, you'd turn on, you know, the bounding box and you'd go and you'd, like, I literally would, like, click down every single layer to figure out what it was <laughs> and I would name it and, oh, it's crazy. Uh, Mandrake one. <laughs> there, we named the group. There you go. And then in here, we're just called Chaos, 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 Chaos. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it should be instead of like, instead of like Photoshop being like layer one, layer two, layer three, Chaos one, Chaos two, yep, Chaos three. Basically. 
I also want to throw him on a brown kind of background because I imagine him being under dirt. Like all these guys' poses, poses, mm -hmm. <laughs> that was a lot. All these guys' poses, whoa, that's Ooh. not the right one. I kind of dig that. Oh, you like it? Oh no, I like the purple better, <laughs> actually. Uh, and, oh, see, this is one of the, the detriments of using a soft light layer, and if it's not white, then yeah. it shows up on your background, which I can totally fix if I want to make everything clipped to one layer, which mm -hmm. basically I can show you. <laughs> um, Alt option, or no, it was con uh, command on this one because it's a Mac, but uh, control on Windows. You can basically take all the layers, and if you press command shift, there we go, then I can select mm -hmm. all the layers by clicking on their thumbnails, basically. And then, oh, I think I selected, oh yeah, this one. Um, anyways, you basically like select all of the mm -hmm. layers that you want the soft light to connect to, uh -huh. and then you can create a new layer, clip all the layers to that layer. Oh, awesome. And then uh, have that soft light on the top, and then it'll cut out all the edges. So I'll figure out which one of these layers is overlapping right now, and then do that for you. Cool. So do you typically work on a PC? I do, yes. Okay. Uh, HP actually was super yeah. generous and they gave me an HP for the residency. <laughs> That's nice. It's amazing. It's such a workhorse. It's one of their workstations and I can uh, stream, do Photoshop, uh, like, what do you call it? Screen record, like all the things at one time and have like five Chrome windows open. That's and it doesn't amazing. Like. It's awesome. That's crazy. <laughs> Shout out to HP. I love you guys. <laughs> Um, but yeah, there's, oh, it's that layer. That's what it is. Okay. It's because this guy is already clipped to this one. So mm -hmm. what I'm going to do is just collapse them because we're not doing super clean work here. So mm -hmm. it doesn't matter anyway. <laughs> okay. So command shift. Doing dirty work. <laughs> Gotta do the dirty work. There we go. So we've basically got everything that we've painted on a layer, or I mean, selected. Now I'm going to fill it with, let's do that hot pink, right? Oh, boom. And then we can clip everything to that. So if I Command D, deselect everything, you can see that hot pink is yep. under there. And then Alt Option, but, or uh, Alt in between all of the layers, and we can clip them to this one at the bottom. Whoops, I dragged a little bit and duplicated. <laughs> and now, boom, soft light layer is Very only cool. on the character. So there's a little trick. Sorry, it was a little clumsy. Awesome. Uh, and then if I want to make the shape or outline of this character a little different, I can erase out on that bottom layer and it'll not cool. destroy anything above it. It yep. just takes out the bottom layer. That's awesome. Mm. So Kita is saying, I would love to be an Adobe Creative Resident. Tell us a little bit about like your process. When, oh my gosh, like, there's so there's much an to tell. application <laughs> process. There I mean, is. In January, they open applications and it is, so worth applying, you guys. Uh, I have a YouTube channel full of me talking about it, basically, because last year when I was an Adobe Creative Resident, I was pushing applications really hard mm -hmm. and put tons of advice online. So if you have any, like, you want advice about how to apply, look there. Mm -hmm. um, and then, like, what it is is basically you pitch a project to Adobe that you want to create, and that project is meant to take you from where you are in your career to where you want to be. Mm -hmm. So I started the year as a an artist, a concept artist for video games, and I wasn't fully happy because I wasn't working on my own ideas yeah. and mm -hmm. creating something that I felt was meaningful. So I pitched the idea of making a children's book because I wanted to become a children's book illustrator. And I thought by doing this book, I could get there, you know? And now I'm telling you I'm working on books and like Yay. with my agents. So, so obviously <laughs> like there's something about it that works for sure. And um, they picked seven for my year. There are nine this year, mm -hmm. nine residents. And they, they go over many ranges of careers. There are photographers, videographers, UI, UX designers, illustrators. typographers, illustrators for yeah. sure. Um, but like, look at the application page. If you just Google Adobe Creative Residency, you'll find it. It is such a godsend <laughs> for artists. Yeah. Like it is seriously like what I wish existed times like 10, you know? I mm -hmm. want every company to that has anything to do with art to do this because it's so beneficial for the community and uh, Adobe gets a lot of feedback throughout it about basically everything. It's very like one-on-one -on -one working with your mm -hmm. audience. And yeah. 
it brought me into the fold completely. Like, obviously, I'm back on Adobe Live, so <laughs> like, I'm an Adobe person forever. Sucked you in. Uh, absolutely, and I couldn't be more grateful to work for a company like this. Every single person I've met is yeah. super passionate about their job. Nobody's scary. <laughs> it's yeah. awesome. Um, but you can literally do whatever you want for the project as long as it it fulfills the goals, basically, mm -hmm. of like getting you where to, you want to be and. Um, basically like showing off an aspect of Adobe. You should work in one of the programs at least. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, they'll have you do things like this. Go on Adobe Live, speak at max. Uh, if you're shy, like don't worry about it. You will get over it. Yeah. <laughs> I was much more introverted at the beginning of the year and now I'm just like me. <laughs> yeah, I mean speaking is one of those things that's just like, you know, drawing or you know, anything else. It's just practice. Exactly, you just have to kind of expose yourself to it. It's like exposure therapy, you know? It's just very important to get yourself out there, especially if you feel shy. Don't yeah. shy away from it. Like, push yourself to that uncomfortable spot. Yep. I've been reading a lot about procrastination lately. Like, a lot of artists tweet about it and stuff where they're like, procrastination isn't laziness or trying to, like, necessarily avoid something. It's fear of what could go wrong or, yeah. like, you know, just you don't want the bad thing to come mm -hmm. out of this. And I progress in a lot, especially when it comes to emails. I'm just like, but oh, I don't yeah. have the answer yet. Okay, what's going to get you the answer, Anna, if you reply? Yeah. <laughs> and, like, you know, there are just stupid things that go on in your brain that you have to fight, you know? Yep. It's like if you're trying to like stay on a diet and you're like, don't eat that ice cream. It's like, that is the kind of thing that you have to do with your brain for work too. Where right. you're like, okay, maybe I'll like give myself an hour to indulge this. Like, I don't want to do it right now, but I'm going to set an alarm to make sure I do it today. Totally. Like yep. it's very important. Yeah. Um, talk to us a little bit about like motivation. Like you're working, <laughs> you know, you motivation? spent a year, you spent a year like working for yourself basically. Oh, heck yeah. And you're still the doing that in some ways. Like what happens when you wake up in the morning and you're just like, Ugh. do you I, ever have that? No, honestly. <gasps> no, awesome. I like, I pick the perfect career okay. well, <laughs> where I'm good. like excited every single day. That's awesome. But I totally understand the feeling of that because I've had the, the job I don't like. Totally, and yeah. And it's, I mean, I was still in an art related job and it's it's just the feeling that you're doing someone else's work, I think, causes that a lot, where mm -hmm. you're like, this isn't my idea. This is like something I'm not totally into. Mm -hmm. And the key to getting over that, in my opinion, is tricking your mind into thinking that you're excited about it. As in, okay, so you have a, an assignment where you're gonna paint a train. Okay. And you're like, I'm not really into it. But you can find reference that makes you feel like, they did that in a cool way. Maybe yeah. I could bring that to this project or like, I, I don't really like the train aspect so much, but the smoke billowing out of it, that would be cool. Yeah. And then you just start from there and kind of work your way through the piece as much as you can. Um, a lot of times I blop in color really like messily to kind of get myself somewhere with a piece. So if I feel less motivated to do it, at least I have something down. And that can make you feel better when you come back to it later. Yeah. Where you're like, okay, well I have something to work with. Yeah. I know what I want to do next. And that's the entire point of motivation is just knowing what you want to do next. <laughs> that's great advice. Okay. I really like that. Like I'm just glad. starting, like finding something, finding something that you like about about it. Exactly. Um, and that's a lot of like, I don't know, I'm a very optimistic person. And uh, I would never guess that. <laughs> <laughs> you can do anything. Uh, and that's one of the things that uh, I think has worked in my favor in my career, for mm -hmm. sure, is just always finding that silver lining and being totally. like, well, I'm, I'm going to make it happen. So yeah. Uh, what's the next step, Anna? You know, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. And talking to yourself helps a lot. <laughs> <laughs> But how do you guys deal with that? I yeah, want to know. Yeah, I'm kind of like, curious. Tricks for Since this is the story of my current life, I'm happy I'm not alone in this. <laughs> is it? I think everyone comes, like, runs into it at some point. In Absolutely. Their life. That's another thing. You always have community around you. Yeah. So, like, you asked me that question, a million other artists will have so many different answers. And something about that will work for you. Like, totally. If you take advice of one person, it could change your entire, like, mindset, workflow, whatever. Yeah. Um, yep. But one thing I would always recommend, regardless of uh, like where you are in your career, if you even illustrate as a career or whatever, is make something that you're passionate about on the side. 
I know that that takes time and effort and everything, yeah. but it will get you where you want to go. It'll get you out of that rut. Yeah. And that's exactly what you need when you're somewhere you don't want to be. Yeah. It's just an out. <laughs> yeah, there was a few years ago, I was working at a job that I wasn't really super psyched about. Mm -hmm. And I needed that. Like I needed that I would come home. Totally. And I actually, I did the... I'm sure some of you guys have done it, but the 365 challenge where you like yes. make one thing every day. I love and I would that. give myself, I would limit myself to an hour. I was uh -huh. like, can't take any longer than an hour. And each I gave, I mean, like, I'm neurotic. And so, like, each <laughs> month had a theme. And like, <laughs> like, <laughs> You're like, like I have planned. But, this. It, but actually, like, it, it helped. It helped me, That's like, so I funny. spent less time deciding what to make. So, like, one, one month the theme was like drawing animals. And nice. different, you know, the next month the theme was like totally. designing a letter. The yeah. third month the theme was like designing a pattern, you know, a repeatable pattern. And actually, like, it did a few things. Like, I got faster and better at it. I improved my skill set. Um, I learned things about, like, tool. Like, for example, like, I hadn't played around with creating patterns in Illustrator very much. Nice, but, Like, yeah. I taught myself how to, you know, things like that just help push you forward, um, both in in terms of like your knowledge of design and creative yeah. tools. Um, and then it just also makes you a better, it's practice. It's like we've been talking about, it's like just practice, practice, practice. Absolutely. And I love that you set yourself that challenge and actually stuck to it. That's like the biggest thing yeah. is actually going through with yeah, it. Yeah, I like honestly, when I started, I was like, I'm probably gonna make it like a month, but I actually like started to really enjoy it and really like it. You know, at first it was hard and I would be like, oh, I don't wanna do it. I was like, okay, I would, I would post it to my blog every day. So it was like accountability. Yes, <laughs> okay, this is a huge thing, accountability. I've seen many techniques to try, like keep accountability for yourself. Uh -huh. Did it feel like that was really effective for you? It was actually because I, I I told people that I was posting it and I like made it like I was uh, I'm not quite so uh, active on Twitter anymore, but I was yeah. like super active on Twitter then. So I'd like post the link on Twitter every day and like yeah. I actually ended up getting a couple followers out of it, which was kind of cool. People That's like, awesome. oh, where's your post? So, <laughs> like I'm looking for it. I know. <laughs> it does. You you do need that accountability and you know Absolutely. different things work for different people. Plus it's I don't know, when I think of following somebody who's doing something like that, it humanizes you so much mm -hmm. because you going through that journey is me going through that journey. Like you feel very much like you're living um what do you call it? Like vicariously through you. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. You made something today. I yeah. feel satisfied. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Um, so Dana Kraft Parker is asking about Fresco. So Anna actually has had access to Fresco for a very long time. The whole year, um, <laughs> the residency. Yeah, awesome. um, I'm the lead designer on it, and so we. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, bro. So we know we have a lot of Fresco <laughs> love going on in here, Heck um, yeah. and it's pretty awesome. We posted the link to the um, access to pre-release earlier. It's adobecom slash slash fresco um, So you can go there to sign up for early access, and. We have seven minutes and 45 <gasps> seconds left to post your daily design challenge Yay. in the design feedback. I can't wait to uh, see. On Discord. So get your stuff up there. Heck yeah. Voodoo Valley, you doing something for this? I want to see it. <laughs> <laughs> Pressure's on. <laughs> I know. But uh, absolutely, this a whole format. By the way, I just want to say to everybody here, I love the format of like making daily challenges because we talk about doing things yeah. like 365 challenges, all that jazz. This is your guys' challenge. Yeah. Like, take it. Actually do the thing. It's really worth it. Yep, yep. Changes so much once you start doing stuff. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, so uh, we have someone asking if this is going to be more of a macho mandrake. <laughs> I feel like the one before, like, are they I gonna love like that term, macho. <laughs> <laughs> back to names? I think that's a good name. Yes, that's my that's a like great name, dog's actually. name. Macho Mandrake. Macho Mandrake. <laughs> I love it. Oh, actually, I wanted to shout out uh, Whitney Weber does awesome mandrake statues that she makes also. Oh, cool. But she's also an artist and she's fantastic. You should definitely check her out. But um, she's made these mandrakes that you could actually have on your desk. And like, I would love to just name them Macho Mandrake and like <laughs> have a little pot that it lives in. So cute. Totally. Oh. But yeah, that, uh, what, uh, that, were they saying that we were calling this macho? Man oh, it was no. Someone just is said it that like be a macho yeah, mandrake? they love the macho mandrake. I think this one. Oh, this is a protea or protea. I don't know how to say that, but these flowers I've seen in Whole Foods before. I didn't know they actually originate or are native to Australia. Oh, so, 
There you go, a little tidbit. Yeah, you know, I actually remember that. I was looking, um, when I got married, I love these flowers, and I was like, oh, I wanna have, uh, I, did, I forgot they were called pretty, and I was looking mm -hmm. for where they were, um, where they originated, and yeah, I was kind of surprised. Yeah, I mean, Australia's got some weird and wacky foliage, foliage, cause you know, desert climates always have really cool stuff. Yeah, for sure. Um, but this one, I remember my mom would always get, and I absolutely loved it, cause it just looks like this, I mean, it's really It's big. huge, they're yeah, they're really very big. big. Flowers. It's and kind of like thistly cactus -y Exactly. Kind of. Yes, and one of the reasons why I wanted it for this is because it has that kind of, well, I got this Adobe stock artwork, by the way. Um, <laughs> it has a gradient on each petal, kind of, where it goes from pink to like a white yep. at the base. And I really like that kind of design aspect in the, in flowers. I'm judging their design. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually just talking to uh, Nicholas Cole on Twitter about that. Uh, he took pictures of hydrangea buds, mm -hmm. you know, as they're like starting to come out. Yeah. They are so beautiful. They just look like these little, I don't they're know. They're like perfect and like. Absolutely perfect. Yeah. They look like the most prim and proper flower once mm -hmm. they've bloomed, because they're already in a bouquet. Yeah, <laughs> like ready to for go. sure. And then they have the little buttons in each one where it just looks like, boop, yeah. done. <laughs> so cool. We have That's Sarah beautiful. joining the chat. Hey, Sarah. Hey, Sarah. You get a shout out particularly. I know. <laughs> Hey everybody, thanks for joining us today, I know. by the way. This has I'm been super fun. excited. You guys, we have less than five minutes. Post your <laughs> stuff on Discord. <laughs> faster, faster. <laughs> oh, by the way, I wanted to ask, um, we could continue going with mandrakes for tomorrow, but I also Ooh. wanted to open up the option of painting Dobby. What do you guys think? Ooh. That is Dobby or more mandrakes? Up to you. I was thinking of... The Dobby is so cute. The sketch on the left. Yeah, super cute. He would be a fun one because there's tons of like different fabrics, so we could do a bunch mm -hmm. of like patterning or color. Oh, that could color. be super fun. Um, but I could continue doing the other mandrakes because we have two on the side here too, and I'm sure I'll finish this up tonight or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then of course I'll post this when it's all done. Yay. So if you follow me, you'll see it. <laughs> I want stickers out of the mandrakes. Mandrake <laughs> stickers. You know, I started a Patreon, and I really want to do stickers. It's just. I think mailing stuff is my biggest hang up. Is yeah. like going out and like actually shipping it. <laughs> yeah. Because I did this. It's really hard. Yeah. It's, it's, and yeah. that sounds like it's a one really of those dumb like thing. <laughs> procrastinating kind of things where you're just like, well, just do it. Yeah. Um, but it's also signing up for something. Like once you promise it to somebody, you got to deliver. You have to do it. Yeah. So it's one of those things that kind of scares me a little bit. But yeah. I mean, I would love to make stickers, honestly. I mm -hmm. just wish I had like enough to give a fulfillment service so that they can do everything yeah. for it. Uh, we have an over, overwhelming request for Dobby. Really? Yeah. Oh, everybody loves Dobby. Yeah. Oh, I'm so happy. <laughs> <laughs> and now we'll get like two things out of this. We'll get Mandrakes and Dobby. How cool is that? I'm very into it. <laughs> so what brush are you using right now? Are you still using the Tilt? No, you're not using Tilt no, Terrific. No, this is the Brayer Boss, which Brayer is Boss. a very chunky, like, yeah, I really textural like it. kind I'm of thing. It. And then Bristle Bomb is my like go-to yes. favorite. It has such a great edge to it. And I might go over some of this and give it a little bit of that scratchy edge. Yeah, Bristle Bomb is awesome. Uh, and then Tilterific is obviously like just super traditional feeling drawing brush. So I love that for lines. Mm -hmm. uh, which Kyle has a whole drawing box full of like what you could use for lines. Some of them are smoother or rougher or yep. like have more space between the grit, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And it's the best to go through and just like test out every single one of them. Just do a line with each and yep. just feel like, what do I like? When I put down that line, did I feel satisfied? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that kind of stuff can really, um, I don't know, drive your artwork in a certain direction. Mm -hmm. I also recommend, if you guys haven't heard of this before, making a dream portfolio for your style. Have you ever heard oh, of doing that? Oh, no, I haven't. Tell us more <laughs> about the dream portfolio. But uh, first I have to say, yeah. you have a minute and 45 seconds left to post. Ah, on Discord <laughs> for the and daily then, challenge. Are we reviewing after that? I think we are, yeah. I awesome. think we're going to be reviewing them. I'm so excited. Me too. Um, so what we were talking about was... Dream portfolios. Dream portfolios. So uh, dream portfolio is basically if you feel like you don't know what style you want to do artwork in, where you're kind of like, I like what I make, but I want to push it in a direction where... <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> were we not reading the right thing? Um, but we're... Basically, like, I was figuring out at the beginning of the residency what I wanted my children's book illustration style to be because I was very much in the line of animation. Mm. I love animated mm -hmm. everything. So it was kind of like 
going for animation. And um, when I met up with Lee, he was like, first things first, your work doesn't look like a children's book illustrator yet. <laughs> so yeah. what do you want to look like yeah. in this world? Because yeah. there are so many different styles. There's so much freedom and it's just, it's fun. It's really like a fun place to be as an artist is in this world of children's books. So what I did was I went through and found my favorite artists from uh, all of the reference that I had. I got a million children's books and just mm -hmm. figured out what I loved about each artist. Oh, that's great. Yeah, so basically you just take your favorite, all time favorite pieces, mm -hmm. what you would absolutely love to make, and then you pick out what about them has caught your eye where you're like the texture of this one, the colors mm -hmm. here. Oh, they're so good at value. I want to be that good at value, yeah. you know? And it really gives you like a direction to go in mm -hmm. where you think, okay, with my next piece, I'm going to practice mark making like they do. Yeah. And that's exactly how I landed at like, oh, I want to do these little hatches because I, I noticed my tending toward um, Emily Hughes and Taryn Knight. Those two artists do a ton of like, little hatches and they get it from other artists like Edward Gorey does a ton of hatches in his work and so you kind of just feel out what you love about their style and kind of adapt it to what you like as well yeah. because you're never gonna lose yourself. Yeah I think that's, always doing that's one work. of the best pieces of advice is like find someone whose style that you really love mm -hmm. and like make work in that style. Yeah. Like and that's how you that's how you learn that's how you practice. I. I love and hate social media for a lot of reasons, but one of the things that I hate it for is just, it makes people feel like they have to post everything. Yeah. And that everything's for a purpose. And uh, I feel like the key to getting better at your style and your artwork is doing a lot of your own studies. Like, mm -hmm. take the time to really make yourself happy first. And if you want to post it, cool. I'm not like against posting at all, but don't feel like you have to. Yeah. Don't like go into a piece thinking, I am going to post this today. Like that's like just hurting your brain, yeah. <laughs> I feel like. So two things, Max corrected us. The flowers are not from Australia, they're from South Africa. So we are wrong. Really? Thank you, oh, Max. Oh, okay. I was actually Appreciate looking up correction. African and Australian and Hawaiian. I, I was trying to get like different countries, so my bad. Yep. Good job. And then <laughs> the daily challenge time is up. So it is time for us to start reviewing. Yay. Some okay. of the stuff that was posted. Okay. Super excited. All right. So, so ready. I can't wait to see what you guys made. I know. There are going to be a lot of blue circles, I hope. OK. <laughs> I think this one here is, oh yeah, it says off topic. So we've got two hearts. Oh, two oh hearts the little, oh, one. they're the flamingo, um, like the flamingo. Things for pools. Yes. I oh my gosh, those that. are everywhere. Oh, this is cool. Inspiration. I really like this one. I love the color palette on this one. Sort of all the gradients and how it's changing. Absolutely. It's really nice. Absolutely. Who's that? This one is from Gerard. You say Gerard? I would say Gerard. Gerard? Right? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I am not sure. Oh, That's wow. cool. Open up that head. That looks like the Tammy style. We, okay. Kind oh, of. it looks like an open original. There we go. We only dream of images we already have inside of us. That's super cool. Just open up your head, put it on the paper. Easy. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. Done. Very cool. Absolutely. Oh, and here's the cropped one of it. I think I like the bigger the one, open. actually. It feels like yeah. Milky Way it feels like, almost. Yeah, and it feels like it's more open. I like that it extends beyond the edges. Very cool. I think they get, did a good job of also bringing you to the text, like your eye kind of wants to read that. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, what is that? And then you zoom in and see Yeah, it. and I like how the, the gradient is also behind the text. Absolutely. You, you know, I am it. so glad that, like, I feel like there's been an explosion of color recently. Yeah. I feel like we were, like a couple years ago, we were in this room where everything was like kind of monochrome. Totally. And I, I love, love it. <laughs> like, you wear it on your sleeve yeah. how much you love your color. <laughs> I hate color. <laughs> no, I absolutely love color too. Yeah. And I think it's a shame if people don't embrace yeah. like what they love about it. This one this is awesome. It reminds me of like um, the National Parks posters. Absolutely. It's yes. Super cool. It's because they were um, screen printed. So mm -hmm. you would have like separate colors that you would put on each screen. Print yeah. And this thing. one looks like it has some texture in it. So cool. And it's blue. Abadi, Arctic Abadi. glaciers. Yeah. <laughs> Arctic glaciers. I like your reference. <laughs> of course. And hey, there's a blue circle in this one. Yeah. Hey. This is cool. One thing I would recommend with that one is having a little bit less of a regular space between each element. Where oh, it's yeah. like some of them should be a little thinner, a little thicker. Mm -hmm. And you've got some of that going on, but I want it to just push a little bit. Yeah, totally. But I love it. Nice gradient in the sky, mm -hmm. too. 
A lot of gradients Shapes. going on. Shapes. Yeah, that's right. That was cool. It looks like there's Straight a lot of uh, the uh, blend <laughs> modes used on this one. Yeah. Ooh, they've got that like little mm -hmm. drop shadow effect. With I feel like I spy effect. multiply potentially. Totally. I like it. Got to get those shapes, man. They're I speaking know. to me. Oh, this one's super cool. That is. Check it out. Like, there's a lot of depth going into this one. Yeah, it feels there's like a nice play on shadows. <laughs> yeah. There's light at the end of the tunnel. I also feel like that could easily go on a wall where you're like, I want an abstract piece, but I want it to feel like a clean, modern kind yep. of thing where it feels. It, it does feel it a little like mid-century for some reason. Yeah, like it would go really nice in a Frank Lloyd Wright house. Totally, <laughs> gotta get a big old canvas of that. Oh wow, that's cool. Party. Party. So, I, a, li a little bit more blend modes going on there as well. And some bokeh effects. A self-portrait potentially. <laughs> kind of. People are laughing at your uh, your. Avidi Avidak. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, what is that? Is it Eiffel 65 that does that? No. Um, no. I, I Anthony would kill me for saying that. He loves Eiffel 65. Yeah. <laughs> um, Samuel's saying maybe pick two people and try to make a baby of their styles. I saw think someone. <laughs> make a baby totally. of their styles. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's the style child. <laughs> That's actually a really it. good, that's a good personal challenge. Yeah. Like you were talking about before, like finding people whose work that you like and identifying specifically what you like about it and then, mate and you know. Totally. Smashing them together. Smash it. But also it would help you dissect what, you know, makes each style their mm -hmm. style. It's kind of like getting a person's likeness, like drawing a celebrity and making it look like them. It's actually harder than you would think to make it look like their style. Oh yeah. Like really look like it. Yeah. <laughs> It also depends on the style. Some of them are just insane. Yeah. I'm also just real, I'm like not good at drawing faces. Um, and uh -huh. so recently I've decided to sort of just like embrace the weirdness behind yeah. like the drawing people's faces. And it like, it's much more relaxing. It's much more fun. You're like, okay, how, how much can I um, sort of like capitalize on the weirdness of the style, but still have it look. Totally, like lean into it. And look like, like the be the likeness of that person, essentially. Absolutely, that's basically where caricatures come from, where they're just like, we're gonna really like yeah. exaggerate here. I really like the color. This uh, reminds sunset me of the colors range. you use on your first Mandrake. Absolutely, I love sunset colors. Mm -hmm. I agree with this. I want some stars in the sky of this, like a little bit muted of uh, the same color as the text. Yeah. Hey, this is ben close Morgan. to where you're from. Oh, I love Bend. Mm -hmm. Used to go to Sun River all the time, which is right outside Bend. Yeah. And um, one Don't of my good friends is from there. Isn't Ben, don't they have the brewery there? Or am Probably, I there are breweries I mean, there, everywhere yeah. in Oregon. <laughs> like everywhere. It's like the brewery state. Absolutely. <laughs> Rose state or city, whatever. No, yeah. it's brewery. We want beer. <laughs> Beautiful. I actually feel kind of wasted on Portland because we have so much good beer and I don't drink. So I'm just like, mm, yeah. somebody should enjoy this, not me. But you have good donuts. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we've that, got Is that trend kind of over? No, it's going hardcore. Uh, at our airport, James and I have a tradition of always getting a Blue Star donut before oh. we leave. We got uh, old fashioned rosemary, or no, it was uh, bergamot chocolate Ooh. donut before we left. And then also it was like pistachio rose. My kind stomach of. is rumbling so <laughs> They were so good. Oh my gosh. If you guys go to Oregon, get some Blue Star Donuts. Cool. They're worth it. <laughs> Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge, day two. I really like the, yeah, like the shape block out kind uh -huh. of thing. Yeah, it is really nice. It works I well. like how it's, I particularly like this one, like how it's bleeding into the same color. Absolutely. Really cool. That is nice. And I think Challenge is the only one that doesn't quite read. Maybe mm -hmm. changing that like. Uh, mauve brownish kind yeah. of color, a little bit darker or lighter. A little more contrast or yeah. something. Or it could have been, you could have used the, this person could have used the sort of green down below for the words. Yeah, that's true. Because it's, we're yeah, it's like seeing this trend both. of like bleeding yeah. in. I mean, I like it wouldn't. That. No, I think that could really work. Yeah. I would love to see it. Whoever you are, <laughs> make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> Done with fun. We don't nice. need fun here. Again, color. It's yep. awesome. Tons of color. And I do love the overlapping abilities of Photoshop mm -hmm. where it's just like all those colors bleed through and make something That's new. That's the thing is like I was talking with someone before. It's like, what? Like, why do you choose Photoshop to do something? And it's like, because it doesn't matter what you want to do. Like, pretty much anything you want to do, Photoshop can accommodate it to some Absolutely. extent. Absolutely. And it could probably do it in five different ways. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, that's what intimidates some people. They're like, how to do it? And then it's like, there are a lot of ways. Yeah. 
<laughs> That's true. It's like it's it's the best tool and it's also the most intimidating tool. Because I remember the first time I opened Photoshop, I was like, uh, I didn't even know what where to start. I was doing. It's like. Yeah. One of my favorite things about Fresco, honestly, is you open it up and immediately, you know, yeah. this is like drawing and painting. Well, it's made no for illustrators. Worries. It's essentially like <laughs> what Lightroom was for photographers. That's yeah. what Fresco is for illustrators because like Photoshop is amazing. It is so powerful. Totally. Um, but like most people only use like certain number of tools in it. Oh, like for sure. Thirty percent of Photoshop, maybe. Uh, let me tell you a story. <laughs> I went to Icon <laughs> with a ton of different illustrators. Kyle Webster was there with me. Was sitting this at this... in July? Ooh, or was it last year? It was last year. Yeah. It was when it was in Detroit. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Were you there? No, it was right before I had oh, a baby. Been so sad. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's understandable. <laughs> but um, I was at this table full of illustrators, Kyle, one of them, and we had this whole discussion about the liquify tool in Photoshop. Yes. Some people were like, why do we need this? When it was implemented in the program, it hasn't been changed since. It looks like a crazy old tool when you bring it up. And then the other half of the table was like, I use it every single day. Like yeah. this is integral to my process. And that like just showed me if they're updating Photoshop, everybody's gonna have something they love and something they hate about every yep. update. <laughs> like you can't make yeah, everybody every happy. Time. Like someone's always gonna be upset. Yeah, because a lot of artists are like, just cut the fat, we don't need all this stuff. And yeah. then, you know, everybody else is like, no, we need <laughs> Yeah, for my for my grad thesis, I used the three D space in Photoshop to create lenticular prints. Now, if you don't know what Whoa, lenticular no. prints are, they're sort of like, you know those postcards where you turn them and like yeah. something changes? You can do that in Photoshop. There's like a button that will generate what? a lenticular. That's so cool. It's so wait, do you have cool. two images? In you have Photoshop? two images and then you go into the 3D space and there's like, lent I, I forget how to do it because it was so yeah. like Google weird and hidden. Google Adobe forums, it'll tell you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that is so cool though. I would love to make something like that. It's super fun. It's like fun. pseudo animation. Yeah, you just buy lenticular like paper, and then you just like stick it Who over knew it. That and, was like, a thing. <laughs> That's so boom, cool. Done. You can make your own DVD cover. Yeah. This one's got a lot of cool colors going on in it. Explore. Oh man, it's like VR. That's awesome. <laughs> like a guy's shirt. <laughs> <laughs> it's stealing the show, and it's Margaret. also looking at the text in the same direction <laughs> as him. It's great. That's awesome, though. Again, uh, all those like overlaps and overlaps. Yeah. This is really nice. I love nice the use stuff. of lighting. I love the use of elephants. Yeah. I mean, come on. That's I love awesome. elephants. And it's an Indian elephant because of the shape of the ear. And the oh, really? Good. Yeah. So that's how you tell it. Very yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ears are usually the defining thing. Just like alligators and crocodiles, you know, the teeth coming out of the mouth when it's closed. Just okay. crocodile. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> good to know. Oh, yeah. Friends pictures. Mm -hmm. Looks like they're using the bokeh effect. Is that one of Done the corrections? Too? I was using the brush tool last time, and now I did the eraser tool. I think there was something before that we gotcha, maybe yeah. missed. Oh, this is, is day ongoing? one work. Yeah, the okay, bokeh so, effect. Okay, so we're. Like. But yeah, these are awesome. I love seeing all of them. Just the creative community coming out. I course. know it's so cool. <laughs> I love seeing everyone's different styles. Absolutely, it's literally seeing their brains, like mm -hmm. how they work, and which it's kind of so cool. Yeah, it's kind of cool to see how everyone kind of like played. I mean, I don't know if this was intentional, but like kind of how they played off of each other. Mm -hmm. um, you can kind of see it building. That's one of the things I miss about working in a studio is yeah. like working with other people and really giving feedback and getting feedback. I mean, James is also an artist and Anthony is an artist as well. So it just kind of like I can ask for feedback from mm -hmm. the people around me. But it's different when you're in a studio and you can constantly like get inspiration yeah. from whatever they're working on and like yeah. give Someone just kind of like pops up behind you and is like, oh, hey, what you working on? Absolutely. They're like, that fairy could use, you know, this color of wing or whatever, yeah, you know, like totally. just things you would never think of. And oh. it's so cool to see. Here's one we missed. Cheesy. <laughs> there is no cheese here. That's awesome. <laughs> I like the little astronaut. I love it. That's super cool. It's great because it feels like a giant block of Swiss behind them. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is cool. It's like little Ooh. gemstones. I like the style. Absolutely. This actually looks similar to the um, the brush you were just using. Oh, yeah. Somewhat. A little chalky kind of yeah. texture at the end. And I love gems. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this style kind of reminds me a little bit of Sid Weiler. Yes, it does. Yeah. yeah. Another previous cre Adobe Creative, Creative President. President. If I can talk. 
And uh, she's got that kind of hard edge style. Mm -hmm. I love it so much. Um, something interesting about her process is she actually draws with selections. Oh yeah. Like that, she, I know this is kind of like a way people do things, but like she was the first person I saw that she would just like make yeah. her selections and fill it and I was like, Lasso it up. Wait a second. Uh, yep. <laughs> no, it's super cool to see her work because you're like, yeah. I have no idea where she's going sometimes. And then it's like, oh yeah, the selection's filled in. I see it all. Yeah. It's like connect the dots. <laughs> this one, I don't know if I can <laughs> wait, handle you that don't one. Like, uh, wait, eyeballs, what's this eyeballs in my drink. I think it's supposed to be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, it's ice. ice okay. Yeah. But ice floats, cool. guys. Mm, yeah. Unless it's like toxic ice. Yeah. I guess. Well, nice job, guys. This is awesome. It's Yay. so fun to see everyone's work. Absolutely. Um, make sure you come back for the creative challenge tomorrow. I'll have to check to see what that one is, but we're going to have another one tomorrow. Exciting. Which is gonna be awesome. Oh, I want to know what it is now. <laughs> I know. Don't spoil it. Come on. <laughs> But yeah, this was a super awesome round of feedback, guys. It's yeah, just like for sure. So fun to see all of your your brains on a page. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Literally, that guy's had to split. Yeah, <laughs> we're back to that one. Yeah, so it looks like. Oh, I guess maybe I'm not supposed to announce the challenge yet. I want to see it, but, but it's okay. the challenge for tomorrow is going to be cool too. <laughs> <laughs> So our, how much time so, do we have? So so it looks like we've got fifteen minutes. Sweet. Okay, I can totally finish this guy. Let's see, this is like the the awesome side of having a super simple style and being able to rough it in. Yep, I really like that. Um, and just as a reminder for everyone who was here and for some of you who weren't here, uh, Kendall won the chat and win yeah. for today. She gets 100 free three by three die cut stickers from Sticker Mule. Um, but anybody, everyone who did not win, uh, you can still go to stickermule.com slash Adobe Live 19 and get 10 stickers for a dollar. That's it's such a great a deal. Dollar. Seriously, I just. <laughs> Definitely know what I'm doing when this live stream's over. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Ugh, I love the deals that you get here. Like on, again, like I love the Adobe Live uh, format as well as just having prizes for people who watch. Like not everything has that. <laughs> I know, awesome. I know, it is nice. Have you ever uh, heard of, well, I don't know, do you, are you into D&D &D at all? No. <laughs> but I have okay, friends who are. Thing. Yeah, totally. It's like having a whole renaissance with our age group. It's yeah. crazy. Um, but the... Uh, there's a show called Critical Role, if you guys mm -hmm. know it, which is where they just sit down and play D&D &D and it's awesome. And they have giveaways of certain dice boxes and like every day for two months, James would log in and try to get this dice box and I'm just like, oh man, like I know it's one in a million to get it, but having that, that feeling of like you're in it with the people, yeah, like we're totally. all trying this together, let's see which one of us wins. Like mm -hmm. it just, I don't know, there's a sense of camaraderie there and I love it. Like I want to do giveaways. I know. <laughs> It is really nice because you start to, you know, get to know the people that are doing the same thing as you are. And yeah, and it's all related to the same topic. Like, mm -hmm. we're giving away stickers. Like, that's so useful for artists. Totally. And, like, dice box for D&D. &D. Like, it just all fits so synergistically. <laughs> yeah. So, before we end this stream in 15, four, excuse me, 14 <gasps> minutes. 14. Counting what's down. What's the test that I need to be taking? Should I should I take the <laughs> should I take the test tonight and I can come oh, back? Oh heck yeah, you should. You should take. Okay, there are like five tests. Um, make a Pottermore account, and they don't spam you or anything, so it's okay. <laughs> uh, but yeah, make a, a an account on Pottermore.com, and then it'll basically like Pottermore.com induct you okay. into like okay, here is. Um, do you want to take this test? This test? This test? Okay. And yeah, see so they. I'm so sad about that website because it used to be so folksy and like old style where they had these full on illustrations of the book and you could literally read the entire Aww. book with illustrations. And, and it felt like little. the book. Oh, like it was it, so wonderful. Yeah. And you could play games like making potions and stuff. It was oh, really, really fun. Awesome. Um, I accrued 777 points on there. <laughs> <laughs> and I stopped because seven's the most magical number. And so <laughs> I... Uh, I got like my certificate or whatever that they used to have for the website. Such a dork, sorry. But um, the tests on there are pretty straightforward. The Patronus test is like super fast. Okay. It's basically like it's a timed test. So you have to choose between two options uh, they give okay. you. Okay. So I'll and have to then, find the Patronus test. Yeah, I see it like it's right there. I think the middle one. Yeah, it's. Okay. Or children's illustrators draw their interpretations of Patronus is for charity. That's so cool. That is sorry, super that's on cool. The front page of Pottermore right now. But, um,. Anyway, so yeah, throughout that website, um, especially when you make the account, it'll be like right okay. in your face, like take these. So tests. I'll have to, I'll have to do that tonight, and then we'll come back. And what's it gonna tell me again? 
there are several tests. So you'll get your Hogwarts house. Uh, that's like most important if you don't have time for anything else. Um, you can get your wand, which is okay. more in depth, as in it gives you a reading of your core, your wood type, and something else. Oh, the length of it. Okay. So it, it like each one is supposed to correspond. It's kind of like personality tests. Okay. Um, oh, I love personality tests. Oh, good. You're gonna I'm have a fun. Sucker for personality <laughs> tests. Yeah, and they're not like super straightforward. Like the you know what do you like this or this? It's more like here's a situation. What do you do? That kind of thing. Ooh, more like I like that. At your funeral, how do you want people to remember? you and it's like think fondly or like um smile but be sad <laughs> you know like just <laughs> subtly different answers kind yeah. of thing um and then other ones are like black or white <laughs> okay i but can do this i am so interested to see what your house would be so thank you i know i really want you to do that um <laughs> we have someone who's wondering what your patronus is Dolphin. At least oh, the first right. time I took that. it. Okay. Which was crazy because James took the test, got totally different questions asked to him, and also got dolphin. And I was just like, what? What? I did not think we were at all alike. <laughs> 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 like, I love the guy, but we're so different. But um, that was cool for the first one. And then the second time I took it, I got like Basset Hound, I think. Which I'm all about dogs, so I'm not mad at that. Although, James's cousin got Thestral, which is a mythical creature that's um, invisible to anyone who hasn't experienced death. (laughs) Uh, So if you've seen somebody or had somebody close to you die, then you would see this, like, basically a skeletal horse with wings. And that's a Thestral. Kind of cool? Oh, yeah. They're super cool. Yeah. (laughs) And they become kind of important later in the books as a means of transportation. Uh. So, um, read all the books and then take all the tests okay. and then we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> It'll so, be perfect. So, Shauna says, I got Beagle. Beagle! Oh, I love that. <laughs> Kathleen doesn't oh, like no. it because she never connected with the quiz answer. Really? Kendall has Grey Mare. <laughs> Grey Mare. Mary That's Ellen cool. Steele got Bald Eagle. I think, oh, what So, I think, I think tomorrow we have to come back and everyone needs to share their Patronus. Oh, heck yeah. I'm down for that. <laughs> so, if you don't know yet, take the test. Okay. This I is... feel really cool that I know what Patronus is now. <laughs> <laughs> You're so that cool. That was not in my two-minute Harry Potter knowledge oh YouTube gosh. video. <laughs> yeah, she's dedicated, guys. She looked up, like, synopsis and, like, what you need to know for Harry Potter. I did. I You're did. You're so good. So, what did you learn in that? What's most important? Um... I learned, I actually didn't know that Harry Potter's parents had died in the Lake of the Wizardry War. Yeah. Um, and I learned a couple spoilers, which I won't talk about on here. So sad. Which was good. <laughs> well, it was just, it was more what, interesting. We'll talk afterward about what it was, it was like a <laughs> Slytherin uh, spo- spoiler. Uh, <laughs> what, so, right? <laughs> a Slytherin spoiler? What does that mean? Oh my gosh, uh, but uh, Denise got Rottweiler. Ooh, Rottweiler. We got a lot of dogs. Yeah. I'm guessing. Are you guys Hufflepuffs? I don't know. Loyal, true, kind, <laughs> hardworking. Uh, so Kita is asking, where is the test? It's on Pottermore.com, which we are now officially sponsored by. Yeah. <laughs> Adobe and Pottermore. I mean, I'm down for that collaboration. And Can Photoshop. I meet J.K. Rowling? Yeah, no <laughs> kidding, right? Oh man, that's like James's dream. So if I ever got the chance to meet her, I think I would smuggle him in. Like, come on, <laughs> he's got to. We've got questions. Mad Eye Moody's eye. Where does it come from? <laughs> there are things. Kendall said that Slytherin is a spoiler. Slytherin is a spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, don't listen. <laughs> oh. I love cool. it. Um, so we do not have very much time left. We've got three minutes left. I've loved being here, you guys. I know. I love what so you guys fun. are doing. And also, I think we should have, like, a follow-up stream in a few months after you read the books. <laughs> I know. I'm going to have to, like, like, I'm going to have to binge watch. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, at Costco, there was uh, the whole DVD pack of all the movies together, and it wasn't oh, that much, actually. Yeah. So I do want to hype one last thing before we go yeah. for the stream that's happening after us. Um, there will be an XD challenge. Yay! So for those of you uh, who want to do an XD challenge, there's one coming up. And that is with Rocky that is with and Kevin Rocky. Knight, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I actually know Rocky really well. Oh, excellent. Yeah. I've never met him, but I've seen him on here, and I have some of his stickers. Yep. <laughs> he is very good. All right. Awesome. We'll see you guys. Oh, and we've got Howard Pinsky too. Yeah. Oh, awesome. We've got a lot of people. Fantastic. All right. So, 
Last things. Tomorrow we'll be back, 9.30 uh, to 11.30 once again. So uh -huh. set an alarm. Go to Pottermore.com and yes, find your prepared. Patronus. <laughs> I will come back with mine. We're going to be painting Dobby. So uh, read out up on your house elf etiquette and uh, become a SPEW member. Yep. S-P-E-W. You don't get that yet, but you will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, SPEW member. Of course. <laughs> Uh, but thank you All so right. much for joining us, guys. Yep. See you later, guys. See you tomorrow. <laughs>